stuff. That mm. reminds me that I need to message those fuckers over there in, um, well, not like Discord. Yeah. Well, yeah, basically, but no. The fuckers in the, uh, what's it called land? The Logitech land. Alright, 7 o'clock Thursday. Everything is good. I'll switch back to you. We should be good to go live. A hop studio mood. Mood. Mode. Question mark. Real quick. Check. Make sure everything's good. Alright, that looks good. That looks wrong. But I'll fix it. There we go. Um, and we're good to go. So, fading. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for joining us on Table Talk Thursday, episode 56. I'm your host as usual, Dr. Brother underscore one, also known as David, with my co-host here. Raining Death, 999, also known as Kenneth. Yes. What's weird about this setup, since you're so far away, like, I'm going to have to add, like, a tag underneath me, and then a tag, you know, underneath you, right around there. But obviously towards the middle of you. Mm-hmm. Try, trying to point, but <laughs> eh. I, like, ultra-zoomed my camera in. Oh, 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 there we go. We lost folks there for a bit. Focus! Mm-hmm. Anyway. Should, should I have my background be, like, a certain color so you can chroma key it in? So that way I'm not obscuring the background? Yeah. I forget, I have to, like, do this, because I'm trying to, like, make hand motions, but I'm too zoomed in for that. So I have to be like this. You dense motherfucker. Anyway, yeah. um, so, I don't know, it's up to you. Really, you could have just left it green, I could have chroma keyed you over the background. True, Although, then I'd have to just... sit here and do, work with you the whole time as I'm trying to chroma key you. <laughs> So, I mean, if you could turn your background to just green... No, that's what I'm saying. I can do that. No, I mean... It's the same way I inserted the picture. I can just insert, well, a green picture. Yeah, what you should do is just make sure you insert one over that and just leave it the picture. And then, what you could do is we could insert that as our background, so the blue thing. That. Mm Mm-hmm. We can switch this around. We have the technology. And then I can put you on the blue one that I have. Because I like the, the rotating GIF background thing. I don't know, like maybe like we should get a, we should get a, like a newsroom back here or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it anyway. Well, let's hop into the stories. Hop into where you'd be used for money? Yes. So, top of the new, top of the hour for world news so the koreas have decided to form a unite a unified team for the table tennis world championships i thought you were gonna go with something else there unified team for thought that. <laughs> it's just like yes. yes so the two koreas will field a combined women's team at the table tennis world championships after the nations decided not to compete against each other in the quarterfinals I, there's a per- bunch of perfect ones, a bunch of perfect newsroom backgrounds, and they've got like a green screen so you can put somebody on it or into it. That <laughs> mm-hmm. is the best. Well, get them, and I guess we'll, just, we'll try it after the show. It's just funny because we're trying to, it would just me standing here. Oh, my green screen is, is, is fading. That's weird. It got worse. What did I do? I see it. What have I done? Anyways, wow. and my so this is actually issue. pretty interesting to see that this is happening. Uh-huh. Um, I think this really just points to another, another sign of the two Koreas wanting to come together. Um, the thing is, the citizenry of both nations do want a combined um, country. Although I don't know how South Korea is going to deal with the then influx of what would essentially be millions of very poor, you know, extremely... Mm-hmm well, unhealthy due to the circumstances, people that will need tons of medical care and such. It'll probably be quite taxing for the nation. Probably. 
It will um, probably be bad for a lot of people involved. I mean, it'll be good for the formerly North Korean citizen. Yeah, they'll actually get to do, uh, do real things. Yep, be real people. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but this, but like, this is just another sign of the Koreas working together and another sign of unity, another step towards it. Mm-hmm. Um, just a lot of little baby steps to uh, really show the world the Korean people want the unified Korea. But I still don't trust Kim Jong-un for as far as I can throw the fat man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd uh, agree with that. So, um, I don't know where he's I'm still crazy. No matter what public persona he's trying to fit out in this world leader facade. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, the last time that a unified Korea team played in the World Table Tennis Championships was in 1991 in Chiba, Japan, where the women's team shocked defending champions China to win the gold medal. <clears throat> so, so here's a quote. Uh, I'm happy. It's a, bit of a, it's a bit of a risk, of course, as this is not 100% according to the rules, says uh, International Table Tennis Federation President Thomas uh, Wurkert, or uh, Wykert. Uh, but there's no disadvantage to the teams before, and we informed all the other teams, and they agreed. We all feel happy that we have a small sign of the progress to the re- reunion of Korea. And then whatever's going on over there. Huh, I was just uh, changing my headset up, or hmm. plugging back in. Yeah. Uh, it's, so, it's, it's dying. So I, need to plug in. I use it at work as so. well. That's nice. Yes. And it says here, so well, we, we respect the rules, and yes, we change them, and we will, but we will never do it again. It's more than a sport. It's more for the peace. I think it's worth it, says the ITTF president. Peace in the Middle East, baby. Oh, peace in the Asian East. Yeah, no, I just said the Middle East, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. I can't minimize you or else that happens, right? Yeah, you, you freeze up. Damn. Hmm. Depressing. Yes, I have indeed frozen on that screen. I fixed it. Yeah. I just can't have the tab minimized or that that window minimized. You can shrink it down. No, because it'll actually fuck with my crop settings. So oh, for God's sakes. I have to leave it the way it is and just. It's okay though, because the way Windows works, things appear over it. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. all good in the head. Okay, but you yeah, know, this is a very good sign for the Koreas, like I said, and hopefully this will breed. Uh, more togetherness with the Koreas, and hopefully it'll be an actual step towards peace. It'll breed more Koreans. Ha I mean... ha! <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh god, what am I doing? Oh boy. Oh boy! Whoa, what is this? Oh, that's cool. There's a lot of cool stuff here. I better, better stop looking at the cool stuff. Uh... Yeah, and uh, read my story. Alrighty. Um, did you want to tag team the South Korean thing or no? Do you want to yeah. discover? Okay. Yeah, cool. South Korea's president approval rating surges following inter-Korean summit. Uh, South Korea, the South Korean president Moon Jae-in's approval rating surged uh, following this last week's summit with Kim Jong-un, top leader of Democratic People's Republic of Korea. A local survey showed to Thursday. Speaking of which, I just saw a picture today of, uh, it was a meme though, but it was like, I guess Kim Jong un with his daughter posing with, um, I'm assuming Moon and his son. Does they he were have like, a daughter? They were together. I, I don't know. Either that or they were both of Moon's kids? I have no idea. That's mm-hmm. just what I saw. Um, and it was a meme, and then like the second slide of the meme was, uh, all Naruto. It was Naruto and his daughter. And then the other person, uh, Kim Jong Un, was Sasuke and his his daughter. Oh, it was Naruto and his son, rather. And then Sasuke and his daughter. And I was like, ha ha! That's awful. It's awfully hilarious. But anyway, uh, support for Moon jumped 8.3 percentage points over the week to 78.3 percent this week, according to a poll by local desire. pollster Real Meter. Wow, that dude's highly approved. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's um, very surprising for. A leader in a modern democracy to have such an approval rate. I mean, maybe if you don't fucking suck. uh, Well, consider like America, most politicians 
uh, yep. like big like presidents, they yeah. generally only have about from a good chunk of their uh, reign about you know fifty percent. Yeah. Uh, well, which is know. okay because half of the countries country grew. But that's just because we haven't had any fucking decent presidential candidates. That's just what that shows. We've had a shitty pool of candidates, and mm. and it's not even our pool of candidates is necessarily shitty. It's just we keep well, no. picking shitty. It's, it's, well, no, 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 no. It's not even that. It's the pool of candidates we're allowed to pick. Well, we're that's not. So we're so allowed so. to pick more, yep. but the whole like you know no, no, the no, no, two-party no. system thing is where it's we're, at. It's, we're it's not. Probably. The thing is, uh, so in our democracy, quote unquote democracy, uh, we have what they call there's there's two elections. There's the money election, and there's well your general election. Mm -hmm. The money election is the party picking who they want. Yeah. Like what happened with Clinton and Sanders. Sanders was the clear winner by the people, but the party wanted Hillary. So the party mm -hmm. put Hillary into power. That's yeah. money election. Yeah, the but the, the problem is still parties. He still could have yes, ran as independent, yeah. and there's plenty yes. of other people that ran as other things. the parties things. are the problem, because people don't vote third party in this nation. No, people don't vote anything else that isn't a party because they're fucking retarded. That's just it. Oh my god, but my cup looks so cool. Yeah, I'm just saying, so we don't have a true democracy. You know, we're not, you know, going out there and picking the best candidate. We're picking who we're told we're allowed to pick. Who's been approved by this company and that company and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, yeah, we're not a real democracy. We're not just a democracy where I think a... <clears throat> Is it representative? There's something we're, else. We're a constitutional republic, technically. But... But that's not the point. <clears throat> that's not what I'm getting at. I mean, that is the point. I'm getting at that we have rich people telling us who we can pick. Oh, yeah, forcing of course us do. to pick who we can <clears throat> pick. It's okay, though. We're about to start making money. We can throw money around at people. Not that I'd want to, but we're not that rich. But, you know. It's, well, it's not that expensive to buy a politician. Throw $5,000 at them and they'll do your bidding. Uh, I might have found a use for all of my excess money. <laughs> hey. Anyway, the uh, the pollster said Pan Mujam declaration raised expectations for the denuclearization and the establishment of peace on the Korean Peninsula, which led to a fast rise in Moon's support scores. Moon and Kim met on the South Korean side of the border village of Pan Mujam on April 27th, uh, which is the border zone town, agreeing to complete denuclearization and the change of the current arms disagreement into a peace treaty by the end of this year. The peninsula remains technically in a state of war, as the 1950-1953 Korean War ended with an armistice. armistice. Uh, <clears throat> support for Moon's ruling Democratic Party gained 2.7 percentage points to 54.9%, staying in the top post. Cool. So the party is, is 50 um, um, do they have Republicans there? Because they have a Democratic Party. What else do they have? Like, I assume they have a lot of parties. Probably. Because <clears throat> most most. I'm assuming now they're having parties. a lot of parties that uh, North Korea's out of the picture. Well, not yet. I mean, the only reason he's saying denuclearization is because his fucking testing <coughs> facility got destroyed. Yeah. So there's a that 4K Pro webcam. I'm looking at webcams a lot. Yeah, I know. The Logitech Brio, two hundred no. bucks. It's just uh, well, yeah. It just says Logitech 4K Pro. Which is the yeah. Phone. yeah. 200 bucks. So, I mean, I, I got this one for like 200 bucks, I think. So, in a... Are we upgrading to 4K? The world may never do. I mean, probably. I mean... I mean, I need to upgrade this <clears throat> webcam. It's terrible. It says you, it's 1080p, but it's just not very good. <clears throat> uh, you get the stream deck, and I'll get the 4K camera. This so, thing is USB C. Yeah, it's a lot of bandwidth, man. 4K 60 frames per second takes about 60. I don't think it's 60K 60 frames. Though. Everything's always like 4K 30 or 1080 30. Like this is 1080 30, yeah, but it's 720 60. <clears throat> it's weird. Anyways, so in a uh, in news of futures yet to come, China has stopped buying U.S. soybean supplies. So this was a, another thing that was talked about, and that was truly expected to happen once the soy tariffs went into place, that it was expected Ch China would stop buying U.S. soy. So this is a bit of a, of a shock. 
to U.S. soy producers because they figured China would keep the supply going to the last second and then switch. But China has decided to just switch anyways and let their impact be known. I mean, so, doesn't that hurt them a lot? Don't they use a shit ton of soy for everything? Yeah, but they can get it from other people for slightly more expensive than they get it here in the U.S., but still cheaper than what it would be after the tariffs. You know, it's to put out a message that China doesn't have to buy from the U.S. They choose to buy. And they can get their supplies from anywhere else just as well as they can here. And that's more powerful a message than even tariffs themselves. Because then that puts in peril the entire industry, not just right now in the tariffs talking points, but for the entire future. Because then it could see U.S. soy production go to, in this case, Brazil, and see huge revenue coming in for Brazil and Brazilian soy farmers rather than American soy farmers, and then American soy farmers go to business. So this is, you know, China throwing its weight around. Mm -hmm. But yes, the world's biggest oil seed producer uh, processor just confirmed that one of the soybean market's biggest fears, that China has essentially stopped buying U.S. supplies. Uh, Man, so they got this resolved so fast last time. Man, they've been taking a week to have fast. Hmm. So here's a quote here. So whatever they're buying is non-U.S., stating the obvious, says uh, Bungie CEO Soren Schroeder. Said in Who? Code, Bungie, like, what kind of Bungie? Not the Game Maker Bungie, right? No, not the Game Maker Bungie. Okay. It's gonna say, like, Nani? Limited. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind of, like, worried for a second. Cause, you know, weird. Yes, Bungie is getting into the oil, in oil seed processor. <laughs> I mean, like, to be honest, fucking, do you hear anything about Destiny or Destiny 2 anymore? No. <laughs> fucking flop. Yep. Anyway. Especially, yeah, Destiny 2 Major. It was so hyped, and then, like, everyone played it for a fucking couple days and just went green eggs and ham yeah, and then got, did nothing. People got onto the bullshit they were doing no bullshit. pretty quickly. Well, we'll get to that in tech news. Stay well, we, we, we did, we covered that already, the whole, like, them doing the weird level system XP cap yeah, well, thing. that yeah. was the thing they were doing. Yeah, but it wasn't, that wasn't the deal. Like, even then, I had multiple friends that within the first week fucking maxed out Glimmer, maxed out everything, already had the best weapons and the best well, gear in the game. Also, it's a carbon copy of Destiny 1 with some new locations and skins in a... I mean, it's all the same deal. There wasn't, there's no real substance to it. No, there was no real substance to Destiny 1 for me, that's why I stopped playing. Yeah. I mean, it takes substance to keep a game going. Even with multiplayer, you can make multiplayer games with good substance. You know, good action, good controls, good gameplay, and it keeps people engaged and going. Uh, looking at you, Black Desert. I like everything about Black Desert. But just, it, it was kind of built like uh, Destiny 2 was for me. Because Destiny Black 2 Desert's works the same a grinding way. Simula a grinding simulator, and it's just that's not like That's how fucking, that's how Destiny was. Because Destiny, you could do almost everything solo. And you just run around with a DMR and yeah. rock everything all day. Yeah, no you problem. could. Anyways. So he says, so continuing, he says they're buying beans in Canada, in Brazil, mostly Brazil, but very deliberately not buying anything from the United States. Which, as it says here, it's caught many in the U.S. agriculture by surprise uh, when China announced last month the planned tariffs for the American shipment of soybeans. Good thing we don't have any, like, good thing we don't have a shit ton of vegans or people that actually give a shit about soy here. Well, soy is a big business, because China is, well, the world's top buyer of it. Yeah, I think soy is used in tofu and stuff like that. Well, yeah. And I mean, soy is used in a lot of products. A lot mm -hmm. of products. But, a lot yeah. of non-real foods are soy. No, no, no. Not Fucking foods, but, I mean, just normal Seattle foods. 2070 is all soy! No, but I mean, like, normal foods also have a shit ton of soy in them. Do they? Yeah. You just, you look at the ingredients list, man. But I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't really affect, you know, products produced with soy. It just affects whatever China produces or uses soy with. Still bad. No soy here. <laughs> but there's definitely caffeine. Which yeah. can make me sterile, but since this stuff is like light on caffeine... It doesn't make you sterile. It's a caffeine can. No, well, no caffeine can. Oh. It just reduces motility. 
slight sterilization. Yeah. That's no, it's not sterilization. Meh. Nah, it's whatever. Close enough. Same anyway. thing. So, but it's, but it's very clear that the <clears throat> trade tensions have already stopped you trying from buying U.S. supplies. I mean, too bad everything in our country is made over there, and we have to buy shit from them. Yes, well, nobody wins in a trade war, as we've discussed on this show. Yep. Anyway, uh, U.S. detainees in North Korea may have been relocated. I thought I read something today that said they were actually released, or they will be released, as per one of Trump's demands. Well, he wants them to be released. Mm -hmm. Anyway, three Americans detained in North Korea may have been moved ahead of the possible release to coincide with a summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump. The United States has been demanding the North free Kim Hak Song and Kim Seng Duk, Duck, whatever, and Kim Dong Chul. Okay, so these are all North Koreans, I'm guessing. Well, no, these are South Koreans and Vietnamese mm. who've gone up there uh, normally for religious reasons. Mm. Anyway, well done. Um. So, uh, reports have said the two sides were close to reaching a deal on their release. They are staying in a hotel on the outskirts of Pyongyang. Wow, they're in a hotel. That's fucking definitely moving up from shitty, like, waterboarding camps and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, said Choi sung Ryong, a South Korean activist with contacts in the North. Is there, are they inciting rebellion in the North? Question mark? <laughs> anyway, uh, the three det detainees are being kept separately, Choi said. But we're going on tours, receiving medical treatment, and eating good food. Interesting. <laughs> They're like, we have to make it seem like these people weren't treated like shit, and that they love North Korea, so that Donald mm. Trump will like us. Yeah. Yep. Um, diplomatic sources in Pyongyang said there were rumors that the three had been relocated, but there had been no confirmation of their exact whereabouts. Uh, we have been talking about them. We are negotiating now, Trump said at a joint press conference with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. That's interesting. Didn't know the Japanese were coming on this too. Uh, Kim Dong Chul, a South Korea born American pastor, wow, uh, that's a mouthful, has been detained in the North since 2015 when he was arrested for spying. He was sentenced to 10 years hard labor in 2016. Yes, internment camps, the best. Uh, Kim Hak Sung and Kim Sang Duk, or Tony Kim, were both <laughs> Working at the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology, founded by evangelical Christians from overseas, when they were detained last year on suspicions of uh, on suspicion of hostile acts. An and ironic they, name for a university by evangelical Christians. And, and also, like, yeah, the science and technology. And I'm like, what do they do? Like, any science and technology institutes I know do fucking government contracts and work on spooky bullshit. Or I'm looking at you, MIT. I mean, MIT There's... is probably a billion. Huh? I said MIT probably does a, t does a ton of things. Yeah, but all you ever hear about is all the MIT kid going to DARPA and shit. And all Maybe. DARPA does is make bad things for the most part. I mean, they make robots, but they, they do a lot of bad shit. <laughs> Our government really likes them. I mean... I don't hear about very many people from MIT going anywhere else and doing anything to save people's lives. So, well, ironically enough, Salisa's brother came from MIT. <clears> and he works yeah, I know. TV. So, just there you go. It. You just that's heard a... somebody who came from MIT. That's not, but yeah, not saving people's lives, like you said, though. No, not doing but I mean, I'm sure stuff. there are MIT graduates who are doing that, whether from the biology or technology side or, I mean... Maybe. People are doing shit. I mean, it's not the the government can't employ everybody from these places. Sure Private industry that? needs to get its say in there as well. Yeah, so a lot of government contracts. Get Anyways, from MIT. So this is a, this is a little funny story I'm having here. So Toronto police suspect pranksters dangled car off bridge. What the fuck? Yep. So Canadian police say they believe. Pranksters are behind a car found suspended from a Toronto overpass. The blue sedan, empty and in disrepair, was spotted hanging from the Millwood Bridge early on Wednesday morning. And here we go to a picture of the car hanging down. It is just the best. It's like a fucking Nissan or something. Little Maxima. I believe it's a Toyota. 
more Toyota. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. One of the two. That's pretty funny. Yep. <coughs> hey. I like uh, how I your you. video instantly pops in and mine takes like a minute. Hmm? I'm going to switch back to the yeah. sources. Yep. Uh, Toronto police originally believed it was part of a movie shoot, but later confirmed that no filming permits had been used. Fire mm -hmm. services were able to safely cut the car down by mid morning. How the hell did they manage to do that? Is That's a better question. An excellent question. An excellent question. Yeah. Like, did they just tie a fucking, you know, cable to it and hope for the best? Like, cars are a couple thousand pounds, even the shittiest, lightest car. Yeah, at least two. Yeah. One to two, something. Probably one and a half. They're, 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 most of them start at two and a half. They're, they're two to three. Even yeah. well, most most sedans are two to three. My car's two to three. Yours is two to three. Yeah. So. Anyway, uh, police have launched a public mischief investigation. <laughs> how it's actually a Honda Civic oh. came to be hanged by cables from the oven. There you go. I knew it was one of the like five lawnmower makers. It's <laughs> funny actually. Somebody, some dude that uh, said that somebody wanted to race me like the the co-worker like comes in all the time saying x wants to race you because we talked about my car and mm -hmm. uh he's like yo con wants to race you in his honda civic i was like oh that's a lawnmower i'll eat that for breakfast it's cool he's <laughs> like hey i'm offended because he drives you know in a court <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like hey man a lawnmower, See, is a lawnmower. yeah but he's driving a v6 manual mm. it's also two played with yeah, there's a difference. Anyway, um, so yes. No, you're good. Okay. Uh, the incident resulted in the use of significant resources that were not available to attend a genuine emergency service call, calls for service. Uh, police said in a release. So apparently, well, ironically, well, not ironic, but this just sounds about right. So, university engineering students in the U.S., Canada, and U.K. have a history. Of similar chicanery. <laughs> just tomfoolery. I know it says tomfoolery. I'm saying chicanery. It's all <laughs> the same old beard, old people words that nobody uses anymore. People use it. And it's being used right here. Yeah, how old is this person that wrote this? Well, let's see. They're journalists for the BBC, so I'd say probably say about 40s. I rest my case. Old people. Also, they're from the UK. They don't even fucking count. They use weird words over there, too. They fucking they spell color. Kalur. Yeah. yeah. So, in the 2009, uh, one prank from the University of British Columbia uh, students failed when the cables holding up a suspended car from a bridge in Vancouver broke, plunging the vehicle into the water. Five students were caught and threatened with criminal charges. So, it's, it's, I guess, like, you fell getting one car up, do it again. Mm. Uh, in 2001, UBC, I guess University of British Columbia students, again, claimed responsibility for dangling the shell of an old Volkswagen Beetle from the railing of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Wow, that is impressive. Yeah, I don't know if it's the University of British Columbia, because British Columbia is... University of Berkeley College? I don't know. Maybe something. Long story short, Everybody loves dangling cars off bridges. Yeah, uh, that's kind of weird. That's kind of strange. But I love, the, I love this next one here. So in 1994, MIT Engineering placed a police car on the roof of a campus building, and it had to be disassembled to be removed. I just love that the cops couldn't figure out the engineering effort it took to get it up there, so they just disassembled it all. The cops probably just didn't have access to a crane. I guess. I mean, I if, I, if some fucking engineering students can get a goddamn police car on a roof, I'm sure the actual police can do the same. I mean, listen, rather, I listen first of all, they're all going to MIT. So they have either, you know, good wallets or something. So daddy's credit card can rent a fucking crane that can hoist a, a car and throw it on top of it. I suppose so, but so couldn't the police... <clears throat> They, the police are actually, they're poor, and they, they let's be real here, the police, the, think, think of the police like the school district, they don't want to spend the money. I know, but it was disassembled to be removed. It's Is cheaper it, for them to make all the cops that don't do anything anyway, disassemble the car and take it down piece by piece, I guess, I, guess. I don't know. <laughs> they made some excuse, 
they wanted to get really pissed off. Oh, we had to take it apart piece by piece. So now we're throwing you in the slammer. Yeah. Something like that. But anyway. On to news that is... God. Keep up here. On to news that is not really surprising to me. Israel seems to be preparing for war with Iran. <clears throat> uh, an Israeli airstrike on the western Syrian city of Hama on Sunday killed two dozen Iranian soldiers and targeted arms recently delivered from Iran, uh, said three U.S. officials, and is the latest sign that Israel and Iran are moving closer to open warfare. What a surprise! On the list of potentials for most li uh, likely live hostility around the world, the battle between Israel and Iran in Syria is at the top of the list right now, said one senior U.S. official. Uh, three U.S. officials say Israeli F-15s hit Hama after Iran delivered weapons to a base that houses Iran's 47th Brigade, including surface-to-air missiles in addition to killing two dozen troops, including officers, to strike wounded three dozen others. Uh, in the past two weeks, Iran has increased military cargo flights into, uh, to Syria, stocked with additional weapons and supplies like small arms, ammunition, and surface-to-air missiles. That the two U.S. officials believe are meant both to shore up Iranian ground forces and a strike at Israel. I mean, this is definitely troubling to see. Um, with, like I said, with the Iranian uh, moving of weapons, um, obviously, Iran is an enemy of America and a lot of the world, and also close allies with Russia. Um, so obviously, we don't want them sending weapons to people. Mm -hmm. But it also doesn't help. I mean, because. They're relatively close together, Israel and Iran. There's Syria dividing them, I believe. So, I love how they're just like skipping Syria and just kind of going at it, going at each other instead. Well, that's why they're moving the weapons to Syria, and then Syria is putting them on the border because Syria and Iran are allies because they're all allies together with Russia. Yeah, which is basically what I'm saying. It's like. But it, so, again, it's, it's not surprising. Place. It won't be su that, that surprising either whenever we back Israel and go in and pull another desert yes, storm that's what I'm slash worried Afghanistan about. slash Iraq slash every single, all of the back Middle East. The Middle East. There's never back, peace in the Middle East. to the Middle East. Who's, do, who do we have? We don't have, who has oil over there? We don't have oil, there's the natural gas pipeline and stuff, but what about oil? Uh, well, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait... Um, yeah, but it's all those. Those people aren't going to fight us. Saudi Arabia is too rich to fight us. So let's throw money at us and we'll walk, go away. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> Syria has nothing. I think Iran has oil. Maybe. Memory serves. And minerals. Iran uh, supposedly has nukes. Do they? I don't know. They won't work on nuclear programs. We, we, well, Iran's yes, been in trouble right. with us multiple well, times. Well, we stopped that. Okay. Well, an, well, an international effort between about eight different countries. We all came together and told and shut down Iran's uh, weapons production facilities, and we have the IAEA in there constantly monitoring them. Nice. So, um, I mean, and as far as I can tell, and as far as most people can tell, Iran's living up to their side of the deal as far as the nuclear weapons business goes. Mm -hmm. Although, it's all up in the air, depending on what Trump will do. Yep. Speaking of which, the three scary. U.S. officials said Israel now seems to be prepa preparing for military action and is seeking U.S. help and support. On Tuesday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu fucking told CNN that nobody wants war, but that Iran is, is the aggressor and that Israel has to take a stand. I mean, that's exactly what you tell somebody if you want to wage war and have friends still. Mm -hmm. Anyway, on war, uh, I mean on Monday... Defense Secretary James Mattis said that he and Israeli Defense Minister Av uh, Avigdor Lieberman spoke at some length about Iran's presence and actions in Syria during a meeting at the Pentagon last week. The U.S. military mission in Syria continues to be uh, to defeat the Islamic State and does not include a mission to target the Syrian regime or its proxy forces. Supposedly. I'm going to have to throw supposedly on the end there. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, didn't he supposedly liberate, like, everybody from the Islamic State? We, well, supposedly we've, uh, mission accomplished that, um, destroyed the Islamic State. Yeah. Yet, uh... But it's oh, more so, that we've kicked, we've kicked them out of their major stronghold. Yeah. So, so speaking of which, uh, I want to point out something that's, like, 
going to be local news or U.S. news. Um, but there was a kid that got caught uh, planning to shoot up a mall. Yep, up here. covering that. Oh, we're covering that? Okay, cool. Interesting. Yeah, like my coworkers are talking about it. I just come up here and everything starts going crazy. I'm what's wrong with the world. Yes. Yes. And I'm okay with this. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, okay. Jump back to. So, on to U.S. news with Donald Trump. Starting us off. Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump. Uh, so, it says here, Donald Trump wrote own health letter, said ph- physician Harold Bernstein. Where's it Stein? Or Stein? Berenstein. Bernstein. Bird, burr. Yep. Oh. So, Donald Trump's former doctor has said he did not write a 2015 letter declaring the then Republican presidential candidate's astonishingly health, uh, excellent health, uh, U.S. media report that Mr. Trump dictated the whole letter. Uh, in, in an interview with CNN, Mr. Bornstein uh, said the 2015 letter suggesting Mr. Trump would be the healthiest individual to ever be elected to the presidency <laughs> was not his professional assessment. Mr. Trump dictated the letter, and I would tell him what he couldn't put in there. It's not clear why Mr. Bornstein is making these allegations now. The letter's contents included statements on Mr. Trump's physical strength and stamina, which were described as extraordinary. That's not Cat. what you I mean, how could Cat. anybody think a doctor no. wrote that? Well, you know, okay. you're just doing things. Hey, go just sit there. It's fine. You know, because it's not the kind of language that a doctor would use. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. You've got an extraordinary case. Of... Hating you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, fine. I've got next door. Switch to this. There we go. No, this <laughs> is he's dead. Uh, beautiful. <laughs> Anyways, so his blood pressure and laboratory tests were described as ex- as astonishingly excellent, and, <laughs> and he was said to have lost fifteen pounds over the course of a year. That's not really a lot. No, I mean, like even for somebody of his age. Is it like? Is he trying to lose weight, or I don't understand? Yeah. Hey, hey, you, hey, no, you know you're not supposed to get up there. Come here, come here. Hey, anyway, it, it added ah! that Mr. Trump. Ow. Okay, your cat's doing something to you. Yes. <laughs> uh, it was petting her, and then she just leaned down and started attacking my hand. Hmm. It's okay. I've got the kitty cat. Yeah. It added that Mr. Trump had no form of cancer and had not had joint surgery. A few weeks ahead of its release, Mr. Trump tweeted that Mr. Bornstein's medical report would show perfection. I am fortunate, fortunate to have been blessed with great genes. Mr. Trump, who became the oldest president to be elected in U.S. history. I didn't realize he was in his 70s already. Yes, he's extremely old. And if you yeah. can bring up that link... Okay. On the story. There's a link here. Yes. Okay. So this here is a link uh, of Obama's health examination uh, by the White House put out. Ironically, the current White House doctor, still. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to just show this because this is how proper, um, you know, health letter looks like you know showing actual statistics you know using medical examinations and terms you know this is this is proper like trump should have you know for a doctor to properly release medical information to show how healthy he is this is something that he should have released yep. for the president to have dictated a letter which it's totally believable i it is completely it's believable. something he would do he, it's certainly something that he'd do, and based on the language of the... If he can stop shouting. I don't want to stop shouting. Shh, don't tell me what to do. But I mean, based upon the language of the letter that, that, that he wrote. Oh, shit. You know, using words like, 
you know, astonishingly the excellent, extraordinary. You know, those aren't medical terms. You know, no. astonishingly excellent, excellent. <laughs> it's just uh, you know very clear. Uh, the New York City-based physician said he was then visited by one of Mr. Trump's personal bodyguards and two other men at his office on February 3rd. They must have been <laughs> here for 20 or 30 minutes. It created a lot of chaos. He chaos? said the original and only copy of Mr. Trump's medical charts, including lab reports, were taken by his aides. Wow. The incident took place shortly after the New York <clears throat> Times published a report in which Mr. Bornstein said he had prescribed Mr. Trump with uh, Propecia, an anti-baldness drug. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and so White House Secretary, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders later insisted that the incident was not a raid and that it was standard procedure for the White House Medical Unit to take possession of the President's medical. Ah, uh, I mean, that makes sense. Because, I mean, it's the President's medical records. They need to be kept secure. I mean, I guess. I don't know if, like, that's the level of security you want to go with there. Well, it kind of makes sense because the president's health record, you know, gives a lot of sensitive information about the president. You know, mm -hmm. what drugs they're on, what they're doing, you know, you know what they're eating. So it, it could lead to somebody, you know, I don't know, wanting to kill the president by putting in drugs that don't combine together. It cause problems. Drugs don't combine together. Drugs combine! Yeah, I don't know. Just sensitive information you don't want out about your president. Because also a president should show, you know, good signs of health. Mm -hmm. It's bad for the nation and its power for the president to be shown not being healthy. I suppose that's true too. Still though, quite weird. Quite, quite right. I mean, and, and this is the least of the White House medical unit's worries with all the stories that have come out about how they're just handing out drugs like candy to anybody who comes through the door. Mm-hmm. And then they've been doing it. Hmm. That's really weird. That's, uh, that's not, not supposed to be how that works. Well, whenever you have, like, freaking, you know, Secretary of Interior... No, 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 no. I'm talking about my, uh... Something's wrong here. About my, uh, setup. I'm trying to throw an image as the new background image, and it, uh, it doesn't work. Find that on. Oh well. Sorry, well. <clears throat> I was in like studio mode trying to figure it out and just like okay. Yep, okay. So it's all good. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Speaking of more Trump news, as per usual, Feds monitored Trump lawyer Michael Cohen's phones. Uh, federal investigators have monitored the phone lines of Michael Cohen. It's not clear how long the monitoring of the phone calls have been authorized, but NBC News has learned it was in place in the weeks leading up to the raids of Cohen's offices, obviously, hotel room, and a home in early April, according to one person with direct knowledge. Well then. Uh, the calls are logged by what is commonly referred to as a pen register, uh, which records the number of the phone that made the call and the number that received it, but does not record the contents of any conversation. They're trying to say that the NSA doesn't have access to those. Well, the NSA can't legally, well, monitor citizens' calls. Not without a warrant. Not anymore? I thought no. they, I thought they extended the, uh, Patriot they Act They technically stuff. never have had well, even in the Patriot Act, it says they have to go to the FISA court to get approvals. Now, the mm. FISA court's not exactly, you know, hard to get something approved. Mm. The FISA court's a rubber stamp court to give a light veneer of legitimacy. Yeah. Anyway, at least one phone call between a phone line associated with Cohen and the White House was logged, the person said. Oof. Uh, previously, federal prosecutors in New York have said in court filings that they have conducted covert searches on multiple email accounts maintained by Cohen. Two sources close to uh, Trump's attorney, Rudolph Giuliani, say he it's might... His former New York City mayor, Rudy Giuliani. Huh? Isn't he the former? 
Is he? I don't know. Say so he learned that days after the raid, the president had made a call to Cohen uh, and told Trump never to call again out of concern of the calls being recorded by prosecutors. <laughs> yeah, I know. Rudy, nice. Yeah, Rudy Giuliani, former uh, mayor of New York. Rudolph Giuliani? Yeah, I mean, it's Rudolph, but people call him Rudy. Interesting. Um, anyway, uh, Giuliani told Fox News Wednesday night that Trump repaid Cohen the $130,000 he used to keep the adult film star Stormy Daniels from going public with allegations about her affair with Trump. The Cohen investigation is being led by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan and the FBI. Investigators are looking into the $130,000 between uh, transactions between Cohen and Daniels, also known as Stephanie Clifford, and a re- reported payment of $150,000 from American Media Inc. publishers of the National Enquirer to a second woman who says she had an affair with Trump. Playboy model Karen McDougal. So there's another one! Mm-hmm. I mean... To be fair, she's a playboy. Wow, you know, like, they got paid, like, not a lot of money as far as, you know, things go with the Trump empire. Like, he could have paid them a lot better, to be honest. He could have. But, you know, if he did that, he could have taken them to civil court. I'm sure there's a reason. He does. Uh, there's right, a video here. Stormy Downs lawyer says he was stunned after Giuliani bombed him. Video. Hmm. We've spent weeks. Is there no sound in this video? If not yeah, months, it's hearing it's from Donald Trump, Michael Cohen, right? Sarah Sanders, that the president knew yeah. nothing about to Stormy Daniels and didn't reimburse uh, Michael yeah, Cohen for the payment to Stormy headset, Daniels. That turns out to be a complete lie. That he did reimburse Michael Cohen for for uh, the, the $130,000. I mean, I think that's kind of amazing. Well, but what if it was reimbursed, Jeffrey, sorry to interrupt, through a retainer, a monthly retainer that he was paying his personal lawyer, $35,000 a month, and so he didn't know what that was going to. I mean, that's what Rudy Giuliani is saying. I, I mean, you know, that's what he's saying, <laughs> but it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, it is absolutely it gets harder ridiculous. to maintain. <laughs> right, but there are uh, different it standards. Gets harder though, to Jeffrey. maintain is an elegant way of Attorney General right. Cuccinelli Thank saying you. that. But it's just ridiculous. Thank I mean, you, come Jeffrey. on, you either know yeah, it or you right. don't. And and I'm sorry, yeah. I don't care how much Wait, money you're putting into talking? your campaign, as Rudy said during the, that interview. Oh, $130,000 to a porn star, it kind of gets your attention. It's kind of memorable. Rudy Giuliani <laughs> is talking. He was, he was talking last night. He's talking again this morning. So here he is explaining yep. why uh, Michael Cohen would uh, pay $130,000 uh, out of his own pocket Do for a, a non-existent screen? affair. Here we go. Let me try to fix this real quick. This was for personal reasons. This was the president had been hurt. Yellow? Personally, not Maybe. politically, personally so go. much. And, and and the first right. lady, yeah, still can't hear by some you of the false things. allegations. Well, but that one more false allegation, friend. six years old. I you think he was trying to help the family. No, and I, to, to, for be, that, I mean, the man is being treated like so some kind of villain. And I think he was just being a good lawyer. In fact, you're still playing the video in the background behind your BRB screen. your thoughts? I mean, you know, it is not... It, it is the oh, it, like sakes. everything in that sentence. You should have a knot in front of. I mean, it's so completely it's false. First of all, it's unethical when you can't for a it. lawyer to pay a damage judgment or pay a settlement or pay anything on behalf of a client without telling the client. So the idea that he was being a good lawyer by not telling his client that he was doing this is the inverse of what's true. I mean, I'm going to be done with you. In addition, Shit. it's not believable. <laughs> it's not yeah. believable that my. All right, cool. It's done. Um, let me close captions. Yeah, I, I don't really know what the point, the problem is here. Oh, she pay back this year. Check your um on Windows. Check your uh. You know how whenever you click the uh, well, you're running ten or seven. Excuse me. Are you running ten or seven? Excuse me. What kind of question is that? I would assume you're running 10, but I don't know. You like to run weird old things. 
I like Windows 7, but no, I, I'm stuck running Windows 10. Okay. I should revert back to Windows 7. Click on better. the speaker icon. Yes, I already did that. It shows select- that. Yes, it shows that Google Chrome's there and Google Chrome playing in theory. No, no, no. No, but did you? So you click the icon and it brings up just the, the black or whatever thing and it says, and you can, there's a little arrow. Up, you're talking about the up arrow? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, select your headphones. Yeah, they've been, they've, they've been, how do you think I'm hearing you? And also, Discord? All of my desktop audio is still going through properly. So, it's just this fucking video. Go Sanders, no, that it's all the other videos you've The president phone, you knew nothing about the payment yeah, but to, 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 to Stormy Daniels. Recently. And, and like, fucking, it is my default audio device. Like, I'm watching the sound go into it, and the bars moving, but there's no sound going into my ears. <laughs> like, everything is telling me it should be working, but it's not. But again, it's not like a care. I'm just gonna move on. Not a big deal. Go ahead and comment on it. Let's talk about that. What the fuck happened exactly? So. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Well, we anyway, so Trump basically has come out and changed his story. Yet again, about the whole Stormy Daniels thing, uh, stating that he actually did pay Cohen the one hundred and thirty thousand dollars as retainer fees, um, <laughs> instead of paying him as a reimbursement for the payment, um, which is obviously contradictory to the. Many weeks worth of statements. But, but realistically, he can say that. What does that actually matter? The well, only it, real problem like, that the world would have well, is if he. Well, it's a concern that he didn't report it on his financial report to, for like his loans that he's supposed to report to the government before he becomes Wait. president. Oh, okay, that's weird. So he didn't report it there in the financial filings, and then mm-hmm. it's also the worry that. Uh, which is what brought this to light, is that he had he used campaign, campaign funds. Campaign. Yeah, that's what I said. That's the only real issue here is him using campaign funds. Well, sure, if somebody doesn't... And it's the legal financial fraud. Or it's the oh, illegal it. financial fraud. Is it financial fraud, though? Yeah, for not reporting campaign? to the government, you know, pay, payments and loans or whatever. It wasn't a loan or anything. It was just a payment to somebody. Yeah, it's a very big payment to pay off a person. Is that, is that something you have to report? I'm unaware that as an something individual you have, you have to, to do that. Well, I, 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 the only thing it's because he's trying. It's because he's president. I I guess, but I feel like you're not. You don't have to report who you pay. The only person that's supposed to report the money they take in is the other person. They no, have to report that making the money. There's some form somewhere there where they have to report it. My Anyways. first time I'm fucking hearing about that. Also, that laptop that no. guy's using, that Dell, that's yeah. al- almost what I have at work, except mine's. I think. Well, the rules for the rich are, you know, a lot different. The rules for the rich don't exist. What are you talking about? He has enough money to make it just disappear. He's also the president of the United States. Let's see if he tries to sweep it all under the rug. He could have her assassinated will. for all we. You know, I'm pretty sure. If he, I'm pretty sure he might have already tried by now. He might have been like, somebody, just take her out. I don't care. Deal with her. Like, Mr. Trump, we can't do that. We we can only do that whenever we don't. Well, (laughs) she's a U.S. citizen. If she steps out of the country, we can drone strike her, but as long as she's in America. If she steps out of the country, oh no, she disappeared in fucking South America and ended up in the Middle East, killed by a bomb. She shouldn't have gone to the Middle East. No, not really. I mean, we killed U.S. citizens. We have. No. I know. I know. I'm, I'm making jokes, but yeah. Yeah. No, it's not like they couldn't if they really she just, wanted she to. She just steps one foot into Mexico, and all you just you don't even hear, you hear the drone; you just see the explosion. Pretty much. In the fucking the poor border say, office border blows up, and then they're just like, "Oh no, it was a Mexican terrorist." <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, "Praise Jesus" or something. But anyway, all right, that's enough of that. All right, now your turn. Carry on. So, children who play football before the age of 12 show CTE 
related symptoms much sooner. What is CTE? Uh, CTE is like concussion. Uh, I forget the exact term. Basically, oh, there it is. Uh, chronic traumatic encephalopath. Oh, yeah. We've known this for a while. This well, not really. really. I mean, I've heard yeah, of this was, before already. Yes. But a lot of the investigations have been done on older football players. This mm -hmm. is a, a new study focusing on children. Oh, man. The South Texas pastime. It's going to go away. Oh, no. You'll break their reality, Kenneth. Don't do it. Oh, there goes gravity. Uh, oh, there goes gravity, yep. Yep, so a new study published in the Annals of Neurology found kids who start playing tackle football before age 12 will, on average, develop cognitive and emotional symptoms associated with the degenerative brain disease, CTE, much earlier than those who start later. As one California family whose son began playing football at the age of nine, football! the sport for his early death. Just a year before his death, James suffered a brutal hit to the head while playing football as a oh. lineman. After well, the game... That's not what I wanted to do, but that worked. Okay, you're doing something over there. After the game, uh, his dad noticed blood around his ears. Uh, he was, and here's a quote from his father, he was known in the neighborhood as a kid who would fall down and just get right back up and go play. He didn't... He never cried. I talked to him about these things and he said, well, I got my bell rung all the time playing football. And I was shocked to hear that, says Gregory Ransom. So, j this is crazy here. So, James suffered from short-term memory and vis vision loss and OCD due to the concussions he suffered. Due to the brain injuries. Jeez. I mean, this is crazy for parents to allow their kids to play a sport that we know in... You know, adult football players whose brains are fully developed, who go and, you know, have severe emotional difficulties and commit suicide quite often. And for parents that let their kids play, and then things like this happen, where the kids suffer short-term memory loss, vision loss, OCD. These things are devastating for a child. And for adult, for anybody. Devastating. So he attempted suicide just three months after the hit and was committed to a mental institution for a month. Woo. Nearly a year later, he took his own life. Uh. So the new study in the Annals of Neurology looked at the brains of 246 deceased amateur and professional football players. 211 of them had the degenerative brain disease known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. Yes, which can be caused by repetitive hits to the head. As we are starting to realize now. Uh, long story short, fucking blows to the head are never good. Again, no. we've always known this. I don't know why this is really news to anybody. Well, we, we, I mean, we've known that concussions have done it, but and also for the longest time, the NFL has tried to cover up for many decades that football, you know, lead causes you know, severe brain drama. That leads to, well, suicide, death, mental So what, what happens to rugby? Do rugby players suffer the same thing? Uh, surprisingly, not as badly, I believe. What if, uh, the, because... what if the protections in place, like the helmets, actually do work more worse than they do good? No, no, the helmets definitely help, but it's because they have the helmets that they usually make take hits harder. Mm. Yeah, rugby... but rugby players go ham, though. Yeah, rugby players do. I mean, I don't know myself, but I mean, I believe rugby players. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm really not sure. I'm <laughs> comment on something I'm not sure about. Um, uh, this is a curious thing. Like, what if that's just the it's the problem? Because it's it's kind of like being grieving over about helmets, about yeah. how like a lot of infantry men will get like the swollen head super basically, or their head basically swells up because of all the gunfire and stuff, even though they're wearing helmets. Something about the helmets being on their head. Oh, yeah, they still so transmit weird. the vibration and force of it. Yeah, I know. But it's it's something about, like, the helmets being on their head causes their heads to expand and fucking do weird shit. I, like, that, I don't... That's weird. I've never heard that. Eh, I think that's semi-accurate. But anyway. 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 So, the study shows that kids who begin playing tackle football 
before the age of 12 begin showing cognitive and emotional symptoms associated with CTE an average of 13 years earlier than those who started after 12. Uh, so the, the answer is to start after 12, basically. Well, I mean, it's... No, the answer is just to avoid football. I mean... Because it's just no, a dangerous no. sport for children, for adults. It's deadly. It's America's fucking most expensive pastime, my boy. Yeah, which is why it should change. Let's go back to baseball being America's pastime. I think baseball is still America's pastime, but... You know, you let's know. make soccer the big thing. I don't fucking broken Let's legs. go make football, football. <laughs> football, football. Make football, football again. Football. Damn straight. Football. Goal. Goal. Yeah, basically. And here it says here, so... um. It's concerning because it's such a change, says Dr. Anne McNee of Boston University, the study's lead researcher. Children's brains are rapidly developing between 8 and 12. They're laying down new networks. They're pruning the different connections. They're sort of enhancing their brain. So basically, it's a very sensitive time where children are you know, building the networks that will shape the rest of their lives. And I'm sure a severe concussion and brain injury will stunt those networks severely. Maybe that's why I'm semi alright. I was in football, but I never went to games. I was just in practice. I fucking what? Did you really you know, say I, you were in football if you were just in practice? Yeah, because I was in football anyway. I was on a team, and I ha went to practice every day. I woke up early every morning to go to practice. I don't know why I just never did, like, never stopped doing that. Because, like, I didn't go to any games. I just went to practice to practice, basically. Mm. Hashtag athletics. Here's another quote. I want parents, mothers and fathers, to know the science and to know what's happening to their son's brains. Because if a mother knows what's happening inside that helmet, she's not going to let her son out on the field. Hey. Says uh, Gregory Ransom. And that's from South Texas. I thought to say, knowing my sister, she would see this and still let my nephew go and... Well, she... He'd go and play... Uh, the studies show that for each year earlier kids begin playing football, their symptoms will progressively show up about two and a half years sooner. So, I mean, basically, I mean, we need better Oh, this is, this is perfect how we did this, how we uh, match them. I can probably play the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take it away. All right, arrested Plano student was inspired by Islamic State to carry out attack at Strobe Briar Mall. Uh, was sick. Which is, like, just north of me, in some direction. I don't go to malls, so it doesn't really matter to me. Also, it's not that ritzy, open-air, rich mall. <laughs> That's the something creek mall. Anyway. A 17-year-old North Texas student, hey, hey, is accused of criminal solicitation of capital murder and making a terroristic threat uh, in an Islamic State-inspired plot to carry out a mass shooting at suburban Dallas Mall. Uh, officials say... <laughs> oh, you know what's funny? To my coworkers, uh, you know, they told me like that the dude was Pakistani or whatever, which I'm sorry mm -hmm. to say here. And I'm like, oh look, it, <coughs> my people didn't do it for once. <laughs> they, they had a good laugh. Indians. I said my people didn't. Yeah. Because like my people didn't do it for once. That's yeah. what it was going on. And they laughed. They had laughing. Well, Pakistan, they're, they're Indians. Pakistanis yes. are Pakistanis, so it's, it's yes. all the same thing. Yeah, yeah. so I made the joke that I, my people didn't do it. They, mm -hmm. they loved that. <clears throat> anyway, uh, the teen, Mateen Azizi Yar, uh, Yar, Yaran, I guess, who lives uh, with his parents in Plano, which is near where I live, was arrested Tuesday at Plano West Senior High School. Shit, there's so many schools around here, I don't even know which one that would be if it is one. And is now being held at the Collin County Jail on a $3 million bond. Yeah, we talked about that. I was like, well, that kid's stuck. <laughs> Or he's going to pay that off for the rest of his life. One of the two. Uh, under Texas law, he'll be tried as an adult and faces up to life in prison for criminal solicitation and up to ten years in prison for making a terroristic threat. <sighs> uh, um, officials said in an arrest affidavit, Azizi Yarand uh, talked online with, an e with a FBI source starting in December 2017 and told the informant how he wanted to conduct a terrorist attack. 
Over the course of four months, an investigator said the suspect communicated with two informants and an undercover agent about possible targets that included an, unna- uh, an, unar- an unnamed school, a Hindu temple, and then Stonebriar Center Mall in Frisco. Uh, according to the affidavit, Aziz Yarand uh, stated that the FBI source in the messages Look at all the other lone wolves. What training did they have? Yet they simply killed the Kufar. Arabic for disbelievers, the affidavit said. Uh, the brothers in Europe and the brother in New York had no limitary training. It's not about numbers. It's about getting a message across to these tag hut countries. It's dangerous to Aki. We have to be careful. Um, some have gotten arrested. So we good, brother? Question mark. Uh, investigators said the suspect discussed waiting until he turned 18 to conduct an attack so he could purchase the rifle himself. Uh, Azizi Arand is quoted in the affidavit as saying, But I swear I want to achieve Allah's pleasure and kill the Kufar. And I've only been reading ISIS magazine guides for performing operations and making bombs. But he uh-huh. needs to be watching and he needs to be reading Inspire. Is that, but isn't that the one he was maybe reading? I don't know. No, Inspire's al Qaeda. No. Okay. It's all the same shit. Uh, Officials say Azizi Yarand said the goal of his attack was not a high death count, depressing, uh, but rather forcing countries to spend more in security, though a high, uh, though a high death count could help get their attention. Wait, what? what? So their goal is for the countries to strengthen themselves? Question well, mark? They want them to waste money in security to sh- restrict their freedoms. Oh, okay, yeah. well, restrict the freedom, sure, but, like, the whole wasting money on security, like, it just makes them more secure so you can do this less. Not really. Anyway, well, in theory. At the time of his arrest, well, I mean, uh, we obviously stopped one, finally. Well, probably well, not finally. Yeah, it yeah. probably happens a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so realistically, it's working. Whatever we're doing is semi-working. Um, anyway, at the time of his arrest, investigator says Aziz Iran had sent more than 1.4 uh, thousand to an informant for the purchase of weapons and tactical gear. He sent the source documents and propaganda, including documents uh, authored by Eric Harris, one of the attackers in the 1999 shooting at Columbine High School. The affidavit said, "Interesting, dude, that kid had fourteen hundred dollars, man. That's that's a decent bit of gear. You can get fucking class three armor uh, plates in a plate carrier for fucking three hundred bucks. I wasn't gonna buy one." I probably should still, uh, especially when I go buy a gun. I'm going to use that Boy Scouts of America, like, card thing that I told you about, and I'm going to go fucking, like, it's got $50 off, or $10 off $50 at Dick's or something. I'm going to buy a gun for $10 off. (laughs) Thanks to the Boy Scouts of America. Well, actually, it's no longer the Boy Scouts of America. I don't know if we have that story in here, but I need to... I have to. Well, that's big news. I'll just cover it. So... Uh, this is very big news. Hot off the presses of uh, yesterday. <laughs> so I uh, bought something that's illegitimate now? <laughs> so the Boy Scouts of America will no longer be known as the Boy Scouts of America. But th- that's the, because of the whole accepting I'm all kids there. Yeah. The recovery they, the, they will be changing to the to Scouts BSA. Because with yesterday's announcement of the name change, also came the fact that they are now going to admit girls into the program. See, I'm a I'm a long time Boy Scout. Who's that card? Camp card. Well, you can't see that because some of the stuff is uh getting turned on the green screen. They have free cheddar fries. Something about Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, a five dollars off, fifty dollars at Tom Thumb, which is where the kid gave it to me. And then all this other shit on the back. Bass Pro Shops, some other stuff. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyways, so so like I said, they have changed, and this is very good news to see. Um, no, the BSA doing right now no. the SBSA. No, no, I, I'm so against the Boy Scouts becoming the Everybody Scouts. Although well, actually, America is actually uh, pretty much the only other the only country other than like one other country in the world that has a scouting program that's not co-ed. Um, we have some scout programs that are co-ed, like though. Like Venture Scouts and Sea Scouts are co-ed, but I mean, the bigger program is, well, the Boy Scouts program. 
Um, but in most other countries, shit. That have Venture Scouts them. do cooler shit than the Boy Scouts did. I had a friend that was in the Venture Scouts. They go travel. They traveled up to fucking Canada and stayed like for a week in just mm -hmm. in the wilderness proper. Like that's cool as shit. We didn't fucking go anywhere and do anything when we were in the Scouts. No, I mean it went nothing like that. Uh, SEMA. Yeah, where? Where? I didn't need to go to that. Right. That's unfortunate. But well, that was cool. That was a week worth of camping in horrible Texas heat. <laughs> walking miles a day up and down back breaking hills. Long story short, Kenneth didn't enjoy it that much. At least that part. Yeah, oh that part. The rest of camp was fun. God, the fucking the walk up to the mess hill was horrible. Like all the other hills actually it was, it was all terrible. The hilly fucking nature. Well, I mean, it's like Bove. We never got a good spot at Bove. We were always far as fuck away. I don't, I don't really remember too much about Bove. I do. I, I remember that we were always like one of the furthest campgrounds. We always had to walk forever to get to the mess hall. Mm. Yeah, the El Rancho Cima, the mess hall was a good, probably... Mm, I want to say farther than a half mile. I'd say maybe about between half and, a qu and three quarters of a mile. It's okay. You can use the exercise. Uh, <laughs> that one wasn't so bad. But up. There you go. Anyway, I'll keep going. As I complain about camp. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, this is very good to see the Boy Scouts finally uh, integrating after being, again, America. We're one of the last nations to finally do something the rest of the world has figured out. Because we're literally the only nation in the world that, that has a scouting program that is not integrated. Um, because the rest of the world's scouting programs are. Um, so, yay America for being another holdout. But it's also desperation on their part, because they know that membership is down across the board, um, and now it's only declining. So they're oh. letting girls in in a bid to steal from the Girl Scouts uh, and, well, get membership up. Girl Scouts is, like, relatively crumbling, though, from what I've seen. There's, those Girl Scouts have uh, less less of a whatever well, uh, base. Well, the Boy Scouts, I believe, current membership includes 2.3, down from 2.6 about five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and Girl Scouts includes 1.5, 1.8. So, the Girl Scouts clearly a smaller program. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, it's focus gotta... is, um, I don't know, I've been reading things from people who are in the Girl Scouts, and people say their focus is a bit all over the place, depending on what troop you get with. Yeah. Some of the troops, they just focus on, you know, the cookie sales and the girl you know, things, the bullshit, you know. Things. And some of them actually do do camping, but it's a it's a lot rarer for that to occur. I would assume so because people expect girls to honestly not do that. Like it's it's very. And the thing is, the girls the girls in the Girl Scouts know it's bullshit, and they're like, "Yeah, I was a Girl Scout, and it was bullshit. I wanted to go do what all the Boy Scouts are doing, going out camping and all the other bullshit." And oh, I did you do cool shit. Yeah, but no, I was stuck selling cookies door to door. Or... You know, but, in the closest grocery store. But I also have five dollars off Bass Pro Shops, though. In the the one of the ones that's listed is Base Pro Drive, Great View, Texas. Hmm. The big one. Uh, yeah, one of the big ones. Uh, there's another one up here next to me, I believe. It was this Garland, but there's there's a there's a Cabela's next to me. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see if um, this changes things. I know there's a interesting quote from the a GSA uh, leader was basically saying things, uh, relations between the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts have been fairly good, and now that mm -hmm. with this uh, announcement, uh, things have gotten chilly between them. Alright, we'll uh, cover the black men and the Starbucks thing. Didn't they cover the story? Is this like an update? Uh, Did we, no. We never talked about it? I think it was only developing, and I don't think it was on the list. Pretty sure. Oh, we covered it. Because, yeah, me and you did talk about it live last week, because we talked about how you could totally just go to fucking Starbucks and, like, it's kind of, you know, people sit there, except you said that you weren't really, you didn't really know people went there and sat there for hours without ordering anything. Neither did I. But I knew yeah. you could go there and sit there for hours. Yeah, I, I, I always feel weird 
again, because, like, if I don't order something, like, when I was stealing internet recently, I at least ordered a drink and then sat down and stole internet. Yeah, I mean, it's just good manners. I mean, if you're... It's also proper for any business. You're supposed to do that. Otherwise, it's soliciting. That space the business can't, you know, have actual customers use. Yeah, even if Um, there's no customers, like, in that fucking Walmart subway that I was sitting in forever. So, uh... So this is an update to I guess, a story we covered last week about the two black men who are arrested in the Starbucks. Uh, so the black men have settled with Starbucks and the city. So as it says here, two black men were arrested for sitting at a Philadelphia Starbucks without ordering anything, settled with the world's biggest coffee shop chain Wednesday <coughs> for an undisclosed sum of money, uh, for an undisclosed sum. And an offer of a free college education. That's Ooh, cool. nice. Separately, they reached a deal with the city for a symbolic $1 each and a promise from officials to set up a $200,000 program for entrepreneurs in the Philadelphia area. I think that's a neat thing. You know, putting your tax dollars to work. No, rather, putting their tax dollars to work with a program for young entrepreneurs. Okay. Uh, the men portrayed the twin settlement as an effort to make sure that something positive came out of the April 12th incident, which touched off a furor around the U.S. over racial profiling. We thought long and hard about it, and we feel like this is the best way to see that change that we want, to see the change that we want to see. Uh, said Dante Robinson, one of those arrested. It's not, it's not a right now thing. That's good for right now, but it's still like we'll see true change over time. Uh, business partners Robinson and Rashawn Nelson, both 23, were led away in handcuffs and accused of trespassing last month after the manager of a Starbucks in the city's well-to-do Rittenhouse Square neighborhood called police, saying the men refused to buy anything or leave. After spending hours in jail, they were, they were released and no charges were filed. Hmm. Did they yes. actually refuse to buy anything or leave? Because they, they, no, they, they made their case saying they were waitless and behavior. Yeah. Um, I f- I remember, if I believe correctly, they were actually only there like two minutes before the police were called. Oh, not well, that's hours. Weird. That's weird. Um, yeah. Uh, that's not close. even near soliciting levels. That's just, yeah. yo, man, I'm taking a But apparently a they asked to, to use, one of them asked to use the restroom, mm-hmm. and they said it was for customers only, and they which, didn't want to buy anything. Which is always bullshit when people say it, because I believe the restrooms have to be public. Right. Well, I mean, if you have a public restroom, it has to be available to the public. Yeah, but I mean, if it's if it's a fucking restroom that's like in a building where people will sit for a while, I think it has to be public. You can't, uh, you're not supposed to have you know non-public restrooms if you're a place that's you know like I said offering something where you sit down and you will be there for a while. I guess a yeah particular type of thing. Yeah, I don't understand yeah. gas stations where you know they they deny you being able to run and run out to the thing because you don't you're not there to stay. But this has, you know, seeding and stuff, and you're usually there to stay for, like, a few minutes or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they were only there two minutes before, uh... Set at the arrest I think that's how Starbucks that. decided to call the police on them. Yeah, which is no way of. Yep. On Wednesday, Starbucks announced it had reached a financial settlement with men, and the amount was not disclosed. The company said they will also be given the opportunity to complete their bachelor's degrees, their tuition fully covered, through a Starbucks partnership with Arizona State University. The online college program was created in 2014 for Starbucks employees. There's also I, I, I didn't know that Starbucks had a fucking college program. Yeah, go figure. But that's very hipster and progressive of them. Yeah. Also, the men will be given the chance to discuss their experiences and share their recommendations for changes at Starbucks with former U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder. That's a weird thing, but cool. I mean, you get to talk with, you know, a famed black U.S. Attorney General. Who is the U.S. Attorney General under, well, the first black president as well, so. Uh, and finally, under the deal, the city, with the city, the men's arrest records will be expunged and a program will, will be created to offer counseling and mentoring to entrepreneurs from Philadelphia High School. Uh, it says here, quote, I am pleased to have resolved the potential claims against the city in this productive manner, said Mayor Jim Kenny, this is an incident that has evoked a lot of pain in our city 
and has put us under a national spotlight for unwanted reasons. Damn, it sounds yeah. like everybody just caved underneath these people pretty hard, which is good, I well, guess. I mean, a discrimination lawsuit against Starbucks, they would not. I mean, clearly, Starbucks understood that they would lose heavily, and they'd probably be awarded millions. So it's easier just to settle with them and give them a little bit, and they can go on their way and take well, I mean, give them a lot of it, because now they can just go to college and fuck around for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least until they get their bachelor's degree. Yeah. I mean, However long it takes them to do that. That's what I'm saying. I could just keep, like, fucking around for a little bit. I mean, it's, it's nice. Like, honestly, you know, I don't know what Arizona State University costs, but, you know, probably 40K, something like that, on top of whatever they were awarded. And it says they're continuing there. their bachelor's degree, which either means that they started it, and they probably have some credits, or they might have associates. So, yeah. you know, it might be cheaper on Starbucks as well. Yeah. Not that, yeah. Not that I give a damn, but... I mean, not that Starbucks can't afford it with their extremely low price. Starbucks classes. can't afford it as well, yes. Yeah. Starbucks also really likes to make themselves seem like the good guys and everything. Mm-hmm. They're ultra hipster. I really don't give a shit. <laughs> but, yeah. <clears throat> Downtown restaurant ordered to pay $10,000 after black man was asked to prepay for food. Ha! <laughs> ha! Uh, I love this. Subtle racism. Beautiful. A Chinese restaurant... There's nothing subtle about it. A Chinese restaurant in downtown Toronto... Oh, wow, this is in Canada. That's kind of weird. I didn't expect this from America. Uh, has ordered a, a, to pay a black man $10,000 by Ontario's human rights uh, tribunal after he and his friends were asked to prepay for their meals. Back on May 3rd, 2014, Emily Rickman bullshit. and his three friends attended uh, a Hongxing Chinese restaurant located in the area of Dunda Street uh, West and University Avenue to celebrate his birthday. After the four men ordered their food, Wickman told the tribunal they were asked to pay for their meals prior to receiving them, which they did. Wickman said they felt that I mean, would do that? I have no idea. About the request. Well, it depends on the way the Chinese food restaurant works. Like, if, you know, you go to Lambo Walk. I mean, I suppose, like, Lambo Walk, but, I mean, this sounds like it's a sit-down restaurant. Yeah. Um, we're asked for the most prior receiving, which they did. Uh, Wickham so felt uneasy about the request and asked other customers inside the restaurant if they're asked to do the same. However, Wickham told the tribunal that none of the customers he spoke to said they were asked to pay in advance, which, Which yeah. makes sense, because it's a proper yeah. restaurant, so who the fuck pays in advance? Yeah, Wickham said he knew after leaving the restaurant that day that somebody had to be held accountable. I would give all of this back ju to just spend two hours with my friends, just bonding for my birthday. He said, I think that was the real cost for me that the experience was taken away from me. I can't put into words, uh, I can't describe the walk back to the bar to walk away from the restaurant, essentially being denied our dignity. Now, to be honest with you, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, like that's just him no, saying. I mean, it's definitely a bed. problem. I mean, when you're yeah, but but it, it's I'm... not it's not that big of a problem. It's not something that makes that happen that bad. That's that's a fucking like really well constructed thing to make everything seem a lot worse. That that quote there, because well, I, I know it's it's, it's not that never, bad. I suppose it's just because you've never dealt with something like it. I well, I'm know, never putting, going putting, to honestly. I mean, putting yourself in their shoes, you know. Walking into a restaurant, you know, expecting to just say, hey, you know, it's because it's, it's this guy's birthday as well. He went to the restaurant mm -hmm. for his birthday to have, you know, a party with some friends, have a good time, eat some food, etc. And then you go there, and then you, the angry Chinese, racist Chinese lady behind the bar or wherever. You pay now! You pay now! No, yeah. eat, pay now! And then they're like, and then, okay. And then they're like, uh, is this how we do it here at this restaurant? And then they're like, I guess so. Kind of thing. I mean, I mean, basically, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it doesn't ever get to the point like where he said, where he just, you know, give it but all back for two being, hours. I no, know, no, 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 no. I, I, I know what you're saying. Profiled. Yes, yes, yes. I get that. But I'm saying that saying that line is too far. It's like whenever I did the same thing for my insurance claim, I didn't feel jack shit, but I wanted to get four thousand dollars, so I fucking talked it up. And fucking just, just dunked, like fucking set the basketball goal up and fucking ride him cowboy with my nuts across his face, dunk the living dog shit above that guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used 
the the most literate vocabulary I had to take a big stimmy dump on him to tell the insurance company that he was a fucking like terrible per- driver. He was fucking dumb and oblivious and all those other things. I mean, I said some bad shit. I'll pull that out one day and show it to you. Um, because it's like this. It's like where I go overboard and dunking on somebody just so I get the money. Mm-hmm. Like it's not. It's really not all that. Honestly, I didn't really give a fuck when it happened either. But I was like, ooh, free money. Because it was free to me. Free 99, mm-hmm. baby. Um, but anyway. And, and, and you know, it was really true. The dude was ignorant. And, you know, it seemed as if he didn't apply brakes when coming off the highway. the guy that your car, which caused you to slam to the person in front of you? Yeah, it's the dude who went, like, 40 off the fucking highway during a rainy day. Didn't stop when we are all stopped at a stoplight. And fucking destroyed my friend's car. Mm-hmm. Like... His car was fine, though. He just had a dent, but he just destroyed my friend's car. And then the person mm-hmm. in front of us didn't really give a shit either. They had a small dent, but they were just like, eh, you don't have to give me your insurance. I don't really care. I'm peace out. Just left. Hmm. But that guy, like, he he was weird. He was also, like, acting very weird. He mm-hmm. seemed, like, just out of his head. Then again, he was probably freaking out because he just slammed into somebody and stuff. Yep. But his insurance company was being massive dicks, like, the whole time, you know, we were dealing with them. They're like, uh, we won't pay your medical bills. And I was like, excuse the fuck out of me, you're paying my medical bills, I don't give a fuck what you say. I was like, okay, you're, you know, throwing salt into my wounds that I semi have. I was like, alright, now I'm gonna write you a fucking angry letter, and fucking, you know, if you don't do this, we're gonna go lawyer up. <laughs> I mean, pretty simple. And anyway. Long story short, we obviously got paid out, I mean, he got his car paid for, he got a Camaro, I got my Genesis. Yeah, everybody wins. Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, um, so yes, <clears throat> the the restaurant in uh, question was ordered to pay Wickham ten thousand dollars as compensation for infringing on his human rights and for injury to his feelings, <laughs> <laughs> self-respect and dignity. I mean, the, the dignity is a bit is the thing they lost there. His feelings is whatever. Human feelings. The human right. right. Yeah, the human rights. Well, that's the dignity thing, too. Rights and dignity, kind of. Hand in hand. Yeah, it's a bit separate. Yeah. But, anyway. dignity, but, but the, the feelings yeah, thing is fun. funny. I'm always like, people's feelings are worthless. Apparently, they're worth, if we divide this up, so we have human rights, about feelings, yeah, self-respect, and dignity. So it's about, it's about 2500 Damn. Where can I buy those? I need some of those. <laughs> anyway. Uh... <laughs> The tribunal said the restaurant did not offer a credible, non-discriminatory reason for what occurred, obviously. I found that Wickham was racially profiled by the police. Now, the real question would be, how many other people do they do that to? Yeah, that is a good question. Uh, The tribunal added that evidence from Wickham proved that the incident had a lasting and profound impact on him. Um, It has fundamentally changed the way he perceives Toronto and the level of the city's inclusiveness, the ruling said. That incident was a rude awakening. I mean, it could be that also Asians are very racist. I mean, yeah. It also could be that, you know, there's black people that stiffed them before. That's also not yeah, out of the question. Look at the link for this story and see if you can watch the video from there. But new storm shelter. It works fine here. This video works fine. Okay, well, I don't know what your deal is then. I don't know. I did. I couldn't hear the last one, but obviously you hear it and I hear it. So I don't know. It, fucking hashtag weird bullshit. Anyway, we're going to roll the video here. Shelters are now open in a green country town already hit hard by a tornado. You're going to love some it. Of the this most guy, unique the guy, ones the in the Mayor's entire state. Accent is just great. What? 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 You were talking with those one the video. What? I said the mayor's accent is fantastic. Okay. Hard work and fundraising is now paying off in Spavanaugh with those new shelters, Spavinal. which can nearly fit the entire mm-hmm. town. News on Sixes, Justin Trayer is on the scene tonight in Spavanaugh with more. Justin? Spavanaugh? Hey guys, when the weather is threatening, people can get to safety inside these two massive shelters. And just to give you an idea, each one of these shelters is about 30 feet long and 7 feet wide. And for a town of about 400, the mayor says these shelters will save yeah, so lives. These are good sized shelters. Yeah. Just in time for the first threat of this severe concrete. storm season, Spavanaugh's unique new storm shelters are finally open. It's a relief since a tornado hit the Mays County town. 
five years ago. We'd have to go back to 2013. We had a first tornado, took out quite a bit of the town and different things. The tornado damaged more than 30 homes, peeled the roof off the old school building, and left many people uneasy. Google donated two 20,000 pound cooling tanks, which the town repurposed into shelters. It's taken a while to raise enough money to convert them, but the shelters are now open. These storm shelters are beneficial to me, so the citizens of Spadina cool can actually Google get to safety when yep. needed and as quickly from, as possible. The tanks That's are neat. Google probably does some sort of industry things like we do at TI. Maybe yes. their data center or something. I just fucking I guess. I don't know. Dude, what's interesting is when I go to work, like I come look at the back of the production plant and like mm -hmm. the other day there was uh, ice on the like liquided liquid nitrogen storage tanks. Mm -hmm. On like two of them out of like the row of them. And I was like, That's cool. I was like, That's weird though that they're frozen over. Eh, whatever. I don't care. Somebody should figure that out. <laughs> Quarter inch of steel <laughs> yeah. have FEMA certified doors on the outside, along with a concrete structure and a handicapped accessible ramp. Mayor Jim Wynn says the shelters are a necessity. It's uh, very important for everybody. Uh, I mean, the mayor's just good. great. He's just, well, got... just a country guy in overalls. This is, this is a looks great. A safe place for our residents. Mayor Wynn says right now the shelters have battery powered lights and they also have vents. But the town hopes to eventually run electricity to the shelters and make more improvements. We'd like to put some benches in, but we're going to need to raise some more money or something. As they raise money, they also hope to raise awareness that the shelters are open and ready. Interesting. Now, I bet people are going to go in there and like give people rides to the shelter if they don't have a I way mean, to get... I mean, it looks like they're locked. I mean, so they may it's, it's open for this dude. Get there if you're looking to donate. You can enter our website, newson6.com. Live on. Yeah, I don't know how much benches are going to cost and shit for that. I mean, it, should, it couldn't be long. These are only temporary shelters anyway. What yeah. happens if something blows over and gets stuck on the doors, though? <laughs> I suppose there's not really much you can do about that. The scene on the story yeah. in Mays I mean, County, Justin Schreyer. You can fit a good amount of people in there. So this is a town of 400, and they want to fit 30, 50 so. people per thing. That's what they say. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of cramped ass motherfuckers. That's what that yeah, is. Yeah, when you're trying to survive a tornado, well, you. Tornado. Tornado. You cramp yourself in very well. Yeah. You know what's interesting though? I feel like if the tornado goes right over the top of that vent, it'll suck all the air out and fucking kill everybody. That's not how that works. Are you sure? I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure the inside of a tornado is a fucking vacuum. I, I, I don't think so. Uh, no. Yeah, certainly not one, that one. That's why, like, for the most part, even if you, you know, just survive through a tornado, like, if you get sucked into a tornado, you die. Just get I mean, on top of the negative around. pressure and upwards winds can literally suck the air out of a person's lungs. But and this is what it says here on Fox. But let me check this up here. Hmm. It's a massive force of negative pressure. That's exactly what a tornado is. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's true. <laughs> that's why I'm like, you know, what, whatever. It's fine. And it's funny that they have like those little battery powered sticky lights. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny. Right. Anyways. On to this. Oh, wow. So, a group files a petition to overturn uh, Oklahoma's recent uh, tax increases that funded teachers' raises. So, Oklahoma voters could get a chance to vote on repealing a tax hike package used to fund teacher pay raise. So, whoever the hell is doing this is an asshole. First off. Depending on how big the tax hike is, though. Well, let's get to that. So tax hike critics on Tuesday filed a referendum seeking to overturn the House Bill 1010XX. Uh, 1010XX. 1010XX. 
the bill passed in the second special. So it's literally like quadruple ten. Yes, actually. It raises taxes to fund an average of six thousand dollars teacher pay raise. Now, now, this is where I really want the focus to be on. The measure adds one dollar to a pack of cigarettes, three cents to gasoline, three six cents to diesel, and increase the gross production tax from five percent to five percent uh, to five percent from two percent. So, so, so let's look at the nature of what's affected. Three cents on gasoline, most people can ignore that. Same for diesel because diesel really only affects like big like trucks and eighteen wheelers. So that will mainly affect well people who can afford a fucking big truck and company. And even that, not really super huge big deal. No, six cents isn't. For instance, I pay fifty to sixty cents extra for my special gasoline in my car. Yeah, so, so but, most people won't even notice the gasoline races and diesel races. I only stop races. getting good gas because it's fucking over $3 now. <laughs> but what people will notice is the cigarettes. And I cigarettes mean, is cigarettes huge. That's always, pretty huge. Cigarette prices have always been going up. Like in New York, a pack of cigarettes is like $15. That's gross. Down here, it's like 5 or 6 five, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But Ish. that's because they don't want people to smoke, so they want to tax it to death, which makes sense. If people can't afford to smoke, well, they can't smoke. So, instantly, my thought goes to who's paying for this group and how much? Because the, the cigarette companies, it wouldn't surprise me if the cigarette companies and Big Oil were backing this uh, group. This group of the people. Who just against tax hikes, because adding a dollar to cigarettes will probably really severely cut cigarette sales, at least in some some percentage, enough to where cigarette companies will want to stop that. And gross production tax, I had to look this up. Um, let me load the page for it. So it refers to uh, companies that generate revenue based upon depleting non-renewable resources like oil, gas, coal mining, and mining of metals and minerals. And so literally anything useful, <laughs> for the most part. Not really. I mean, oil, gas, and coal mining is a small thing for some states. Yeah, but that, that's anything, though. That's like other... No, no, no. It's industries. producers of it. You know, yeah. like, like Chevron Phillips 66 plant. Yeah. But it's also, you know, like, I would think cement and some other build, basically building materials when they no. play there, too. It, it wouldn't affect those. Yeah. Because it's, it's meant for people who take non-renewable resources. You know, yeah. like oil, gas. C concrete isn't a non-renewable resource. It actually is. It, it damages the it's... shit out of things to fucking, you know, dig up giant quarries full of rocks and the stones that you need for concrete. Concrete's mm -hmm. a non But anyways, it's the tax normally introduces a means of compensating the state for the pollution the miners emit. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if this would affect concrete producers. I mean, they also use heavy machinery and fucking chug away True. gas and shit. They have so but but I suspect that this group is funded by a combination of, you know, oil and natural gas and Cold. Well, uh, what? Uh, I don't know why natural gas, because natural gas is clean burning. Well, they still, it's a non-renewable resource. That's true. So, you know, yeah. you're not going to get more natural gas. Yeah. So, I imagine they'd be affected. So, so I imagine this, this group is like... Is there's there's tons of natural gas, though. By I the believe we have... And by the big them. oil companies. Because it just no. makes sense that they would want to keep their business... Either that or it's just a bunch of fucking stupid people like I the Bay City it. people that are just like, we don't want any taxes. Have you seen the citizens of Bay City? Have you seen yeah. what they went through because of their, oh no, we don't want to raise taxes. I mean, you've got Eric, you got your Eric Schroeder, you got your Peters, you got your whoever the fuck else is in that giant group of fucktards. Mm -hmm. You got those people. They exist yeah. everywhere. I do. I mean, yeah, I, am, I understand they exist, but I'm just very suspicious. Because, I mean, when money's involved and groups are involved against raising taxes for particular items, 
it always makes me very suspicious about you know what companies actually back these groups for this goal you know no. i think this is a reasonable question to ask who's funding these people no probably is continue on this work yes uh, so supporters need slightly more than 41,000 signatures to get state question 799 on the ballot, and the deadline is July 18th. So Ronde, Ronde Villemont smith is the co-founder of Oklahoma Taxpayers Unite. Oh, God. Give these people with their damn names. Uh, she said supporters hope to get the ballot measure on... They hope to get the measure on the November ballot. Uh, this will place it on the ballot for repeal, either to repeal it or keep it. So it's a so it's a yes or a no vote by people, which it actually isn't, um, because the bill itself has not even passed. So this is a vote to repeal the bill that hasn't passed yet. I don't think. No, maybe it was approved. I have to double check that. Um, I don't know. These people. Villamont Smith says the group does not oppose pay hikes for teachers. However, the legislature and the leadership took an easy way out and raised taxes. I mean, how else do you fund shit when you don't have money? Mm. You know, let's take money from everything. You know, let's let's magically produce money. You know, do people not understand how? I mean, we uh, already do the... that. Well, I mean, I know we. Well, we don't. I mean, we take debt, at uh, which we borrow money from world governments and other things. But I mean, we that's, under, that's understandable. Like that. That's different, though. I'm that's just saying, we, we actually do that technically. Also, if they, if they just started a blockchain, they could do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they need to change their name from Oklahoma to Oklahoma Blockchain. Technology. There you go. That would produce them fucking bookies of money. Yeah. But I mean, it's just I just hate people who think this way. Mm -hmm. It's just like, how the fuck do you think shit works in the world? Uh, well, the problem is most people don't think, and they're also older people. They think yeah. they know every fucking thing in the world. Yeah. Fucking old people. Fucking old people! The tax package and pay raise were approved prior to last month's two-week uh, teacher walkout that sought additional dollars for common education to lower class sizes, buy supplies, and fund other issues. Because, again, teachers also are desperate for school supplies. However, former Senator Tom Coburn of Oklahoma is again supporting the group's effort to repeal the tax hikes. Today's filing of the vetoes, uh, veto referendum by Senator Tom, Cotton, Tom Coburn's group is fiscally irresponsible, says Alicia Priest, Oklahoma Education Association president. After a decade of cutting budgets, this session our legislature finally acted in the best interest of our students and passed new reoccurring revenue to fund our school. Yes, absolutely correct. Um, and I can back up that statement, um, for instance, from my work for a school district. So we've recently changed things here. So uh, every year we get like a 2 or 3% raise, but insurance also goes up 2 or 3%. No, so, really? I didn't know that there was an actual offset there yeah. on it. Well, and not only that, is that 2% only keeps up, barely keeps up with the rate of inflation, which is 2.1%. So your money is not only worth less, every year, even with the raise, it's worth us doubly less because they take it out of your health insurance. So you're getting less money in the end. Hmm. But they don't tell you that <laughs> on the brochure. It's a brochure. Yeah, yeah. Just suffering. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a brochure on the zoo. Yep. Anyway. Anyways, take it away. Alright, so on the text the tech news, Comcast aims to combat cord cutting by limiting major internet speed increases to cable subscribers. Kind of fuck you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. It's no secret that cord cutting is more popular than ever. The success of services like Sling TV are a testament to that. Naturally, this trend hasn't exactly been ideal for ISPs that offer video services. Cable TV subscribers' uh, numbers continue to drop while the number of cord cutters increases. ISPs, however are looking at alternative methods of keeping their cust uh, customers tied to their cable boxes. I mean, technically these people already get, like, cable internet. They're already using a box and coax. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Anyway, as our technical reports, the latest company to do set is Comcast. According to the outlet, Comcast last week announced that numerous significant internet speed increases will be rolling out to select Houston, uh, Oregon, and Washington-based customers for free. The speed increases would reportedly kick in automatically without raising customers' monthly bills, and would more than double some customers' internet speeds. For example, customers who subscribe to Comcast 60 megabits internet plan are being upgraded to 150 megabits connection, while some 250 megabit customers are being bumped up to a 400 megabit connection. Yeah, that's pretty now, significant bumps. Y- yes. Now, before I go on into this, I'm going to drop some knowledge that the AT&T tech recently told me here. Mm-hmm. So he was saying what happens is with the um, the ISPs like AT&T and everybody, they will they can offer you more speed on the line supposedly, like he's saying for my universe. That's how I'm getting you know almost up, up to 100 when I only pay for 75. But they don't come in and turn it up until another company comes in offering something better for lower, and then they just dial it up at their office. And of I'm course like, they do. I was of like, I was like, yeah, that's accurate. But but basically, you know, part of that could be part of this too, since AT and T and everybody's rolling out fiber for compared to the prices these people are probably paying for these services, cheaper by a lot by far. AT and T's fiber price is honestly hard to beat. The only people that can still beat it is is Google. Yeah. You know, because um, there's or still an Verizon Files if they decided to compete. Yeah, but I don't think Verizon Files goes up to a well, it goes up to a gig, but I think a gig service is more, like more expensive than both of them. I think a hundred yeah. something, hundred twenty. Well, that's the uh, thing. I mean, like we've talked about in the past on the show, is that a lot of these ISPs just simply don't go into the other ISPs area. Yeah, or on top of that, they just sit there and they will go into the other person's area, but like all, but the, until one of them decides to jump up connections. Like, for instance, AT&T could be behind the scenes working online. They could well, have had like five the city. You know, New Wave offered, started offering 100 meg, 100 and everybody meg. got on New Wave because it's 100 meg. And back when AT&T was still offering 12 or 24 at the maximum. Yeah, well, they were when AT&T was offering DSL. That, that's probably one of the reasons why AT&T honestly came back down. And now New Wave is basically useless. They're going to go out of business again, I think. Yeah, sure. it wouldn't surprise me because... I mean, AT&T just simply provides better service. Also, poor, a, poor or New Wave, they came in to you know, inherit such shitty equipment, they had trouble pushing out the 100. I'm glad that they came in and started doing it, because they were pretty good. Oh, the New Wave chick also told me, the New Wave Fiber chick that was trying to you know, get me to help her install mm-hmm. fiber in people's places, was telling me that like, their fiber is way cheaper than uh, AT&T's, which I believe. Even if, even if they are subleasing out from AT&T, because there was one time where I called... Windstream, which bar- doesn't even exist in Bay City, but they said they could actually sell me fiber for like five times, like five, you know, five times under what AT and T quoted me for. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "How the fuck can you be renting out their line and still sell it to me for cheaper?" Yeah, and it's because AT and T is a bunch of assholes. It's just a long story short of that. It's yeah, well, like, well, yeah, like AT and T. Uh, anyway. I mean, I love you guys because you, you know, have support my show right now. But uh, <laughs> fuck you guys no longer. And support mine. Anyway. So, yeah. Um, but if you think this sounds a little too good to be true, you'd be correct. As there's a pretty major catch. Specifically, you'll need to be subscribed to a Comcast bundle that already packages internet and TV services together to receive these increases. It won't be enough to be an internet subscriber alone. Um, Comcast lost 151,000 pay TV customers in 2017, through, uh, though according to a liked man uh, research group, industry-wide cable television providers lost 1.5 million video subscribers in that same period. Like, realistically, 151,000 people kind of isn't that bad. I mean, that's I w- 10% of industry-wide loss. Yeah, so, eh. But, uh, it, it's still pretty bad, but on top of that, if you like, I've lived without television service for so long now, it really doesn't fucking matter. Besides, yeah, also, mean, you're gonna save money if you're just on internet alone, and then you buy one of those packages. You'll probably save money anyway than having internet and TV. Yeah, because I mean, like, I have, I have Netflix, Hulu, and Directv Now, which is essentially TV. It's a, yeah, Directv Now is a TV service, basically. But it's only thirty-five dollars, and I get the large package, which means I get most. I get like ninety percent of the stations they even, the channels they even provide. That's not bad. So I mean, For, you know, so so you see, like what Hulu's ten dollars a month, 
right? Yeah, Hulu's ten. Hulu's ten. Netflix, Netflix is like is ten. Like it's eleven or twelve. Or do you, do you pay for four K? Depends no. if you pay for four K. Right. Okay. It's, then it, it's, it's like, like 12, eleven and it's it's twelve. Well, that's the four K. I'm pretty sure is twelve. No, 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 no. I think it's because I have like four people. That's still you can have the well, under four K package. I think it's like twelve ninety eight or something. Yeah, I thought it was eleven ninety eight. That was a dollar less. Anyway, I know like the four K package is like fourteen fifteen. And yeah, the which means I'm eleven twelve. Okay. Yeah. Four K is a gimmick. Ha! Huh, he agrees. Four K is not a gimmick. Inadvertently. I anyway, it doesn't matter for it because like the living room TV is not four K, so. And they're the people who watch Netflix. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So he's paying, you know, in total. You're paying as much as you pay for TV if you're just getting shit you want. Because, I mean, that's the biggest thing. You pay, like, 50, 60 bucks so, for I mean, TV like, in service, total, you get a bunch of shit you don't want. Yeah, but, I mean, like, in total, I'm paying, well, 45 55 56 dollars for Netflix, Hulu, and basically a TV cable package with a ton of channels for only $100 and DVR. That's what I'm saying. So you're, you're basically paying 50, 60 bucks but you're getting everything you want versus you could pay for yeah. that much and get like, and half of the channels you'll get are either like doubles of the same channels or mm -hmm. also just channels you'll never fucking watch your entire mm -hmm. life. Exactly. It's just, it's just what it is. And then if you want other shit, fucking anybody that wants local news or something, get you a goddamn fucking TV antenna. Get you one mm -hmm. of those fucking like $20 ones and from uh, Amazon, you stick to your window the flat ones. They're always kind of weird to me, but they work all right. Yeah, I mean, that's what we use for our local news. Is the damn antenna. Yep. So there you, you go. Know, I have it hooked up uh, to my NAS. I can actually record live TV. There you go. So anyway, but and there's there. moving on to Anheuser Busch ordering eight hundred. Hydrogen powered semi trucks from Tesla rival Nikola. Or, uh, yeah, Nikola. Tesla, Nikola, for real? Nikola, yes. That's funny. Nikola uh, Tesla, they're fighting. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm just laughing about that. Um, so, yeah, this is actually interesting to me, first of all, because of, uh, we, I hadn't heard anything significant about hydrogen powered vehicles in a while. I know Dow had a big thing where they had made one forever ago and like the technology is progressing because that was currently the best way to, you know, do very low um, environment impacts, you know, and get good power before Tesla came out with their super battery. Because Tesla's batteries are unique and special, I believe. I, still think I, I don't think they are. Tesla's batteries are pretty much like off the show. Shit. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, because everybody, every, there's a bunch of deconstruction and de, um, there's a bunch of videos on, on YouTube about specifically Tesla batteries and, uh, like, destruction videos and, and teardowns and Tesla batteries. Like, there's some sort of process they use for the Tesla batteries that makes them special. I don't think so. Let's see, Tesla source from Panasonic, lithium ion batteries with a cathode. It is a combination of lithium, nickel, cobalt, and aluminum oxide. So I believe they actually, yeah, no, literally, they just use 18650 18, lithium ion Panasonic batteries. It's kind of hilarious. Tesla battery contains over 6,800, 3,100 uh, milliamp. 3.7 volt Panasonic 18650 lithium ion batteries. Those are standard batteries. Well, that's hilarious. Standard being relative. No, no, no. Like the 1850, I believe, is a normal battery. They're special purpose batteries. Are they? No, no, they're not. An, 18, six, an 18650 battery is just a big battery. Like, I have a thing right here. A laser pointer that uses an 18650 battery. Like, they're pretty damn common. Which is why I think it's hilarious that they're literally just using off the shelf shit from Panasonic. Like I said, I feel like those aren't, those aren't no, no, that no. common. Those, those are unless, common batteries. I can go no, pick some not, not used in Not used in normal, like, applications other than in fucking flashlights or laser pointers, like tack gear and stuff. That's. Well, that's, it's mainly, I mean. They're, they are big batteries that have that hold a lot of power. Yeah. I'm just saying, it's not as unusual as you think. These are pretty normal things. 
Apparently, you can buy eight of them. How many of these do you need? Seventy thousand. About seven thousand. Okay, so uh, there's just some quick math here. So that is an eighty-four thousand dollar battery, uh, based on this price right here. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Yeah, that's spicy. Let's see. A lot of a hundred. Oh, there we go. Let's see if we buy these hundred lots. So uh, that means we need what seven, uh, seven hundred. Yeah, hundred, seven hundred. Yeah, that's seventy thousand. So we only need seventy, seven thousand. Okay. Yeah, so about fifty thousand dollars. It's about fifty one thousand dollars if you just bought straight off the shelf um batteries from Panasonic. Oh, However, Panasonic I'm sure it's about probably I'm sure all the batteries are probably about half that cost. So I'm sure they buy Why in bulk? Super bulk wholesale special. No, I was looking at there's a uh like a lot lots of these batteries for a hundred dollars mm -hmm. and a hundred pack for like Six bucks on eBay. Mm -hmm. it says they're all ultra fire, but that says not ultra. They're all yes. Right? So, yes. So, and here's a little backstory for Anheuser Busch. Apparently, they have a long history of finding creative ways to move beer. It was the first company, interestingly enough, to use refrigerated rail cars in the 1870s. Damn, they've been moving beer for a long time. Uh, <laughs> much more recently, it transmitted. 50,000 cases of beer, 120 miles using a self driving semi truck. Uh, so today it announced an order for up to 800 semi trucks powered by hydrogen gas as a part of a bid to make its entire fleet of long haul trucks run on clean energy. By the hydrogen... way, so Tesla, you can make the Tesla battery pack with these eBay lots if you buy 70 of them for $367.5. Well, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna buy seventy. I'm gonna buy seven thousand batteries, Kenneth. Get ready. And build you a Tesla electric car. No, I'm probably just gonna build a giant railgun with them. I don't think they give you the bolts you needing for that, but okay. Well, there's a lot of batteries that can charge faster. I suppose so. I I'll, I'll do the math <laughs> anyway. Anyways, so hydrogen truck, the hydrogen trucks are being built by uh, Nikola Motor Company, which, as it says here, the name Nikola just happens to be the first name of Nikola Tesla, the same Serbian-born inventor that Tesla car company is named after. That's funny. Yeah, that's what that's where the joke was there. Oh, is there something wrong? Can't kind of froze. Are you still alive? Yeah, we're still alive. Oh, did Kenneth drop? Oh no. Rustin Pepperonis. The Kenneth man is dead. Somehow. Hmm. He's just sitting there. Or in battery packs, though. Oh, you're back? This. There we go. Good. What happened? Uh, you, the video and everything just froze. <laughs> and I was like, that's weird. So I left and came back. Okay. Yep. I think Okay. Um, but as I, say, as I was saying, uh, the Nikola trucks have tanks of compressed hydrogen gas. The gas is fed into hydrogen fuel cells where it is combined with oxygen from the air in a process that produces water as well as electricity to power the truck. Interesting. So that is very clean. Mm -hmm. And hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. It is Thank everywhere you. in everything and just is all powerful. Almost like carbon on this planet. Well, carbon is really abundant. Mm. You know what's funny about this mystery pooper thing? I just saw this story. Mm. Like, I literally just saw this appear on Facebook or something. Mm. 
And I was like, what the fuck? Yep. Uh, the biggest challenge for the hydrogen vehicles is finding places to refuel them. To solve that problem, Nikola uh, sells fueling networks along with its trucks. As part of what? its deal. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. As part of its deal with Anheuser Busch, Nikola will build 28 fueling stations strategically placed around the country to serve the beer company's distribution routes. The stations will also be available to other drivers of hydrogen powered cars. Um, also interesting is that apparently these, they're saying these hydrogen cars can go 1,200 to 1,500 miles versus the Tesla semi truck, is... which can go four to 500 miles. So yeah. three times the distance in the same space but powered by hydrogen. That's a pretty, you know, tough thing to beat. Also, that's pretty badass, because, like, 1,200 miles is far as fuck. They would definitely be able to go from one building to another and could have the hydrogen, like, even at buildings and stuff, if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's a long-ass distance. No, that is quite a great distance. I mean, and even with just 28 of them, and as long as they place them along, you know, major highways where Anheuser Busch mm -hmm. has distribution places and such, it should be easy enough for them to cover a good chunk of the nation where they need to be. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of wondering how the heck they plan on getting hydrogen in such a high abundance and transporting it to the locations. It'd be kind of ironic if they're using a hydrogen, hydrogen powered semi truck to hydrogen powered semi truck hydrogen. That has its own, like, internal tank of hydrogen that it's siphoning off of, while the rest of it's, you know, for the delivery. It'd be, well, if it, if, if it'd it be ever efficient. runs out, it'll, it'll just put, put a hose to the back and just run it to the truck itself. Yeah, there you go. But I do like that idea. And I mean, I look forward to the technology. Anything that goes green, you know, anything that's, you know, efficient and cheap and goes the distance. See, that's, that's what I was talking about. Like, hydrogen cars, like, we were, they were... The Dow Dow had one forever ago, many many years ago when I was young still, like super young and still like traveled between you know Lake Jackson and stuff with my dad when my dad was still in my life. It was a thing, and I I haven't heard anything about hydrogen powered vehicles ever since then. It's really a, never come up. There's a my dad has a friend of his who actually had a uh, hydrogen or actually has a natural gas vehicle, not hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Those are actually. Well, I'm not gonna say they're common, but those are definitely more common than hydrogen. They're they're surprisingly like you can go to propane places and fill up your car. I've seen that in a lot of places. I'm like, that's kind of fucking weird, because um, I've never seen you know propane vehicles except for all of uh, Lake Jackson's vehicles. They're all propane, and some city vehicles in some places are all natural gas mm -hmm. burning. It's just weird to me. It's also weird that you would you know have a natural gas burning car, but I mean. Realistically, it's an engine. If it fucking goes boom, it can produce power, realistically. So they can be converted relatively easily. Yeah, and apparently, I mean, even current 18 wheelers on a full tank of diesel, depending on, of course, the size of the tank, can travel, let's say on average, about 17, 1800 miles. So this puts them at an extra, if, if Nikola can produce what they say they can, and it's as efficient as it is, or as efficient as they claim, this will change the trucking industry. Because mm -hmm. who would buy, you know, a diesel engine if you could buy hydrogen for cheaper, because it probably would be cheaper. Because it's, again, the most abundant material in the universe. Um, you know, more efficient, or not, well, it's not as efficient, but clean burning, so, you know, Reduces the you know, environment. Well, that's also a di the different thing too. Is like, what's the tank size for hydrogen? So hydrogen in gas form, you know, it gets compressed well, and turns into liquid. Yeah. But like, how much space does it actually need to take up? Would its tank be the same size or bigger? You know, that kind of thing. Like, is the other gas? Tank. Well, I mean, they said it's going to fit in the same kind of. Uh, like you're talking about, like where they're going to fuel up. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like how it fits on a, you know, diesel wheel. Well, I know it's some like where the Tesla's fit, because you know they have it's under the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. But I'm saying like if it's the if it's the same size as like the current gas tanks, which are still on the underside of most AP wheelers, like it's just you know one cylinder underneath there. If it's like that size, or if it's got to be bigger than that, it's basically what I'm saying. 
I mean, does it matter as long as it fits in the same it, relative it, size of an 18 wheeler? No, no, no. Or, or, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily. It matters based on the efficiency. Is what I'm basically trying to get at. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, however many gallons of fuel mm -hmm. and the size of that gas tank versus the size of, well, the gas tank for hydrogen, which is a gas canister instead, I'm mm -hmm. assuming. So I'm saying is, like, if it's the same size, well, it's, it's still gas. It's yeah. liquid and it's gas, the same thing. But, uh, you know, it, it just, uh, just uh, the question again. is if, if, what, if, what the size constraints are. I'm just curious. On a scientific level, because I want to know like what the actual the company is. is. Sure you, they can find out. No, no, I'm sure I could, but I'm just, it's just like it, it'd be interesting. It's not if, it, if it's the same, no, 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 because I'm trying, I'm trying to make you know, viewership engaged, whatever. If it's about the same size as the current gas tank, then it's not really much of a loss. But if it's like monumentally bigger, nah. then it is kind of weird. That's about it. That's all I was saying. Hmm. Anyway, so shall I run the video here, or what are we doing for this? Uh, let's see. Well, let's just cover the. You're not gonna cover the Google. The Google or Google thing? Oh, I guess Google. Uh, sort of yes, anyway. yes. Uh, no. This is good news for everybody out there. Google starts blocking annoying autoplay videos in Chrome. Google yeah. started rolling out a new version of Chrome last month that further addresses autoplay videos. The latest update, version 66, 6XX, <laughs> includes autoplay video changes that stop Chrome from automatically playing videos if the sound is on by default. Google is gradually rolling these changes out in a personalized way so that Chrome lear uh, learns user preferences of which sites should and should which not I be Which I think blocked. this is also pretty cool. That, you know, they learn what you do and how you use your the website, and then they, well, stop yeah. it. This should prevent audio randomly blasting out of your speakers and visiting your site. But Google's changes mean if you've clicked and played videos on the site in the past, it'll remember the preference feature. Oh no, that's probably bad. It's like, oh, I clicked on this one video. And then it's just like, oh no, I went to porn. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> 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 Fucking, uh, whoopsie. Anyway, uh, as you teach Chrome, you may find you need to click play every now and then. But overall, the new policy blocks about half of unwanted autoplays. So you'll have a fewer surprises and less unwanted noise when you first arrive at a website. That means all of the stupid, shitty news autoplaying videos will go away, except then I'm going to hit play and they're going to come back. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so there's that. So it says here, I looked into the website since you weren't going to do it. Um, the website? The Nikola website. So oh, okay. it says each Nikola truck is anticipated to consume around... 50 to 75 kilograms uh, per day of hydrogen. That's and that the fueling stations way. and the fueling stations will hold 4,000 kilograms of hydrogen, and apparently they can produce uh, hydrogen at 700 bars. I don't really know what that means, but apparently they can be expanded to hold 32 tons of Hydrogen. That so sounds like huge. a lot of fucking hydrogen, yeah. But how much It'd is huge. how much is four hundred gallons to pounds weight? Four hundred gallons to kilograms of weight. Wait, fucking diesel gas tanks on eighteen wheelers are four hundred gallons? Yeah. What? They can be. What? Holy shit. That's gotta be a pricey gas fill up. I'm in. Are you sure you're not? Are you sure that's not the fucking gas tankers themselves? That no, just no, doesn't no. seem right. A, a diesel truck can 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 either be between two and four hundred gallons of freaking diesel. Yeah, I suppose that's true. That's fucking weird because the gas tankers have five fifty five hundred to eleven point six thousand gallons. Hmm. Wow. Uh, I'm trying to read more because I want to know how much these you want to the actual thing. But yeah. I mean, I, th I think it actually, I think they're that good that they can just consume 700 or <clears throat> uh, 75 kilograms of fuel. Yeah. And get well, because I was gonna say you could do it like based on gallons of water because each gallon of fuel and a gallon of water have different weights. I'm pretty sure. I think water weighs kind of. Water's kind of heavy. 
Yeah. Okay, so fuel value as of 2010 density of petroleum diesel is about 0.832 kilograms a liter, or 6.943 pounds U.S. gallon, um, which has a density of about uh, 0.745 kilograms a liter to 6.217 pounds U.S. gallons. So it's about 7 pounds a gallon. Um, and so how many gallons did you say it was? So we're going to math this. Actually, I have a converter here. Oh, you actually found a converter? Yep. So let me just add in. My God. 400 gallons is the equivalent of nearly 3,000 pounds. Uh, yeah, it's 2.8 thousand is what I actually have. Like, it's, well, here's 2.9997. Oh, okay. So it's still similar. So 3,000 pounds. Compared to 75 kilograms. I mean, that's what it says it consumes per day. It doesn't actually say how much is actually on the truck. I'm trying to find that out because I really want to know. Yeah, so uh, 3,000 pounds, by the way, uh, translates to 1,360.77 repeating kilograms. So it's actually technically much more efficient. And also with it being cut down in weight, mm -hmm. it will actually make... Te it'll actually make the truck semi-safer as it's well. It's actually kind of interesting. So the Nikola will produce its own hydrogen on site. Uh, oh, I was going to say the Nikola, like in theory, the way hydrogen works, they can also produce hydrogen by uh, like electrically inside yes. of the vehicle. If they That's exactly to. what they're doing. Well, well, they could, but they're using they're just using hydrogen at the fuel uh, station. Yeah, yeah, but no, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like they pr they can produce hydrogen. Basically, probably near free. And like, Nikola's uh, vehicles will not be charged at the Nikola hydrogen station. Like, not... not wait, what? They won't be so charged Nikola, any money? Says, says Nikola will provide free hydrogen fuel for up to one million miles. God. For the whole company or per truck? Yeah, well, I mean, for a vehicle, yes. God damn. I know. Wow. Okay, so I'm sorry, Tesla, but you just got shit on. Provided that this company can actually produce what it says. They're That's also producing a hydrogen, apparently two hydrogen-powered uh, jet skis and a hydrogen-powered dune buggy. <laughs> Why don't they just produce a hydrogen-powered car and... <laughs> Take the market, you know? Because shit, if this is as good as they say, and as efficient as they say... Then just fucking produce your damn, you know, Tesla and Nikola become Nikola Tesla, <laughs> <laughs> and just by the power of electricity and water combined, you know, <laughs> just do that and then get the get the Model S, replace the batteries with hydrogen cells, and then just replace the Tesla power stations with hydrogen power stations, and there you go. Actually, what you could do is you could do a hybrid hydrogen and power. <laughs> you can I can, a hybrid like, for an all electric vehicle. Well, hy a hybrid electric uh, hydrogen car because you can produce. That's the thing is just with the like with the other hybrid cars. So the thing about other hybrids is you can produce power while you're moving, and that's what other companies did to increase the range of hybrid vehicles already. But the same thing applies to hydrogen. You can produce hydrogen on the fucking road if you want to. Easy. I mean, it is technically possible, but it probably takes a fair amount of electricity. However, uh, well, it takes electricity to separate... To Isn't that, that ironic? Yes. So, these are, you know, it takes electricity to power, to power these st stations to get hydrogen for a clean future, but the electricity that they're using is probably either coming from solar, wind, Coal or not, or or nuclear, so yeah. it's it's kind of ironic. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. You know, whenever we get to better, even better solar panel technology, even better windmills and whatever, because then we can go, you know, whatever renewable energy. And it costs basically. nothing to reserve their uh, eighteen wheelers. Wow. 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 So apparently, so the day cab. Has a range of 500 to 1,000 miles, so 
Mm, I mean, good. It's better than Tesla's by about half. Uh, let's see. Tons of fancy specs, performance, uh, miles per gallon, less weight, no center of gravity, faster talk. Uh, yeah, so that's what I was saying. It's you... much lighter. Um, let's see. Apparently, this vehicle can get 13 to 15 miles per gallon versus diesel, which only gets about seven. And it's also about 2,000 pounds lighter. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going for there. I was like, it's going to be much lighter. That's interesting. And apparently it's top speed up hills can, is estimated to be 65 miles per hour. So yeah. finally, no more slow 18-wheelers moving uphill. I think 18-wheelers on diesel can go that fast nope. or faster. No? Uh, apparently 20 to 40. That doesn't seem correct as I've driven. I mean, have you so ever tried, I mean, it might, it, a it might be a fully loaded eighteen wheeler. Well, yeah. I've been driven, you know, driving Texas roads for a while. They get pretty hilly, but that might be like high grade hills or something like that. There's a difference. Texas hills are they do have some steep grades, but it's not like when you go up north to fucking North Dakota where like you hit twelve grades and shit. Mm -hmm. Those are just bad times for everybody. But anyway, that's interesting. Okay, so it looks like, um, so apparently the trucks, uh, apparently the story was incorrect when it said that it, they stated that they have 1,200 to 1,500 mile range. Apparently on their own website it says they have 500 to 1,000. Mm, okay. That's still very impressive. Yeah. Still good. Still, like, we're easily within a distribution center and whatever. However, that means they're going to need more stations. Or, again... At the distribution centers, have a little hydrogen, you know, contained, obviously. But the thing is, even though they have, they, you know, have less range, they use much, much, much less fuel, mm -hmm. you know, which is hydrogen. I mean, like, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even, is insane. it wouldn't even be out of the question for them to mount, you know, extra tanks for that. Because that's, that's not a lot of weight. Which also, I believe, also means that the containers for them themselves aren't that big. That was what I was going for. 400 gallons is a huge-ass container mm -hmm. versus, you know, however many gallons. 75 of, kilograms. Well, which equates to, I don't know how many gallons of actual, like, you know, gas. 10? 15? Yeah. So, like, a gas canister that's 10 gallons isn't that big. It's, it's, think about a propane tank. I don't know how many pounds a propane tank is or how many gallons it is. Those are a couple of gallons, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, and the density of them. I think they're, I think they're like five gallons. Propane tanks are like five. Or something like that. They're one to five. I don't know where exactly. But yeah. So, you could, in theory, put more of those on and you can you know, mm -hmm. do better if you want. Anyways, let's move on to final stories of the evening. With yeah. stupid and crazy. Oh, this is just a fucking hilarious story. <clears throat> Mystery pooper at New Jersey High School's track turned out to be the superintendent. Super Nintendo. Yep. So the Kenilworth Super Nintendo charged Monday with defecating in public was caught in the act at the Homedale High School football field and track after surveillance was set up due to human feces being found on a daily basis. So, he didn't just do this one time, no. He did it on a daily basis. What's wrong with this man? Uh, I'm gonna say a lot. Yeah. So, Thomas uh, Tremegli Tremegli Lini, Tremeglini There we go. 42. Lives about three miles from the high school in neighboring Aberdeen. He was running on the track at the on the athletic fields at 5:50 a.m. before he was arrested, track coaches and staff at Homedale High School told the district resource officer that they found human feces on or near the football field uh, and track daily. Uh, school employees began monitoring the area, and on Monday, police arrested uh, Chamag Lenny uh, at 5:50 a.m. He's also charged with lewdness and littering, and is due in municipal court to answer for the charge. Apparently, he's taken a leave of absence from his 147000 a year job in Kenilworth. Oh. So, and apparently, he's also a part-time lecturer at Rutgers. 
<laughs> what the hell is wrong with this man to risk a hundred and fifty-seven thousand, well, forty-seven thousand dollar a year job? Was like he making that much? Yeah. Wow. To just uh, go shit on a track and field. He might have had, you know, the same problems that we had. He, he, that's what he thinks of his school district. It's sh <laughs> shit. I don't know. I want to rip off the same school district. I don't know. I want to rip off my ego so bad. I just want to fucking take it and rip it off alive. Take my pliers and screw. Hashtag feel the burn. Uh, anyway. So, over the next story. Uh, in the. Uh, Indiana police, state police are asking anyone who found loose money on I-70 Wednesday uh, to return it. A chaotic scene unfolded around 9 a.m. on westbound I-70 near Holt Road when the ba back security door on a Brinks truck came open. <laughs> Bags of money were falling out of the back onto the intercept, state said ISP Corporal Brock McCoon. God um, damn. Sort of something out of a movie scene where you have bills loose flying all the interstate vehicles stopping people I've getting like, out of their cars. Let me grab a bag of money. Yeah, troopers at the scene initially said up to 600,000 had flown across the interstate, Ooh. but police later said the exact amount was not known. Let just, let's see what the video here is. Police describe people stopping on I-70, walking across the head, interstate, so even jumping over this video. fence to run out and grab cash. Oh, something the police would say is not only huh? illegal, but very so dangerous. Look at all this uh, money. Oh, that's true. I'm not showing it. <laughs> Look at all this money. Like something out of a game show, the Wednesday morning drive to work turned into a mad dash a for cash money. on the west She's side She's just sitting there not grabbing it. God, those are, those are hundreds of shit. A chaotic Same. scene on I-70 Wednesday like, I'll get, morning. Let me bust out a vacuum cleaner. Just an unexpected deposit yeah. right in the middle of the yeah. interstate. Bags of money were falling out of the back uh, onto the interstate. Oh, that, the, for unknown reasons, the back mm -hmm. security door of the truck and wasn't secure. Be, they're not going to be traced. When tracing. it flew open, hundreds of thousands of oh. dollars went blowing in the wind, bringing westbound traffic to a halt. Dude, and dog, your fucking uh, windshield's uh, cracked. Creating a dangerous uh, situation. Oh my God, all that money. Of people on the I'm interstate, just pull over of people on the side of the interstate, in the ditches. Uh, and the grassy areas on the side of the interstate as well. State police say taking this loose money amounts to theft, so they told several people there Is it to only coming out of your cash left? they had stuffed in their pockets. But they're mm. really hoping to catch up with so four guys in a white your, the left audio, not just for you, but also for the stream. Wait, what? The, what? the audio from the video is only coming out of the left audio stream for... Uh, yeah, that's the video. The video is for all, like left side heavy for some reason. Chuck, who reportedly made off with a right whole side. bag of money, that's said, and that's not at all. The other vehicle well, that we had a confirmed report of yeah. um, was a like a school bus where the driver stopped, got out, collected some loose bills, got back in his vehicle, <laughs> and continued. Of course he did. He's a fucking bus driver. He probably gets paid shit. State police can't confirm whether there were kids on the bus at the time. <laughs> There's no telling mm -hmm. how much of the money will be recovered. Troopers were planning to keep an eye on the area through the day, and they say anyone caught grabbing cash oh, could be arrested for theft. If you're willing to, in good conscience, turn it back in, there's amnesty, there's yeah, anyways, no, folks, no that real about questions up. asked if you're willing to give it back. The state police say they've yeah, had no several questions people asked call in because... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what they want to come in and turn in money that they found out here. If you'd like to do the same, you can call state police's headquarters in Indianapolis. In Indianapolis, Zach Myers, Fox 59 News. Well, uh, there you go. All right, everybody. As the uh, as the boy says right here. Thank you, thank you boy. Us. Boy. As the boy here, as the boy without a real job says here, no, without all of this money, uh, I'm just gonna give you the, the cable TV runaround. Uh, you should, you should just switch providers, switch towns. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but no. Okay. Thank you all for fast. joining. <laughs> yes, thank you all for joining us for Table Talk Thursday episode fifty. Yeah. Please join us again next week as we continue to cover the news in the world and around you. Also, check us out on this channel here on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. CST for the Anime Talk Show with Harvey Brother here and a friend of ours, High Kek. And they usually either have a special guest or they are discussing the uh, seasonal shows 
and their episodes in review for that week. And, and next week is the guest time. show. And next week is the guest show, as he says. Do you have a guest? E- tentatively, yes. <laughs> tentatively, yes, they have a guest. That all rhymed, too. I love it. But there we go. So, yes, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, have a good night.